We talking about practice. This is the hottest sports show that's not a sports show. Let's have a conversation. What up, world? Welcome to the TBP show. I'm your host, the Almighty Murs. This show is brought to you by Sauce Supply for all your cannabis needs. Make sure you guys check them out at your local dispensaries. They are available in three states, Nevada, California, and Massachusetts. It's been a minute since y'all seen me, man. The holidays are here. You know, I'm... I'm you know, we're working on a season two. I'm trying to plan that out. Um, and it's been busy. But we got a fucking amazing guest tonight. Uh, one of my guys, man. Um, it, the illest Filipino cat that I know. Uh, he is one of the dopest musicians that I know from Las Vegas by way of Hawaii, I believe. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, not only that, but he's a songwriter. Uh, producer, um, he's a DJ, uh, and he's so he's so like beast with this shit. Uh, his melodies are so clean, everything is soulful. Uh, he's got that bounce. He can make you move. He can make you like uh, get in, in tune with your feelings. Um, and then he could he could talk that mafioso shit, man. Sports aficionado, huge uh, Brooklyn Nets fan who are actually trying to survive right now in the in season tournament. Uh, so we're gonna keep you guys updated on that. And um, man, just a great all around person. Uh, everybody make some noise for my guy, OG Moose. What up, my G? Hey, How you got you, you got to intro me on everything I do, bro. You, I got that you. That is the most like I feel inspired and motivated right now, bro. Like, <laughs> let's yeah, get yeah, it, yeah. man. I got you, man. And you know I got the voice, man. Yes, so, sir. You know I got yes, you. Sir. You need yes, drops? Sir. Let me know. I'll just hop in here and fucking do them real quick. Bro. <laughs> I'm gonna need you on my drops on my DJ sets, <laughs> I bro. Got you, dog. Man, how's life been, bro? Man, life is a roller coaster, bro. This yeah, this year has been you. a roller coaster, but you know I'm grateful to be alive. I woke yeah. up today. Yes, sir. That's the best thing, right? Yes, sir. You know we both. Woke up today and um and I'm just excited to to be in the position to still be creative. You know yeah. what I mean? Like like the fact that I get to do what I love for a living, like that's it's amazing. A, it's amazing, bro. It's that yeah. that in itself is a blessing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, because yeah. I know that's been a that's like pretty much every artist's like lifelong dream is to just uh uh be a musician, you know, yes, and make a and make a living off that and pay the bills. Yeah, and... just doing whatever you love, like any artist, whatever your craft is, right. whether you're a, a chef, whether mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean, in visual arts, whether you in audio, and you know what I mean, like yeah. anything that involves your hands, like yeah. you know anyone in your mind, in your mind, yeah. like you know, and that's the dream is just to be a working class person, and you know, I know for me, it's only my second year as a full time DJ and musician, so right. like. Um, I know this is still the beginning and like uh, everything is just steps and, you know, patience. And like the one of the biggest lessons, like I remember, uh, you know, learning in this in this journey is that like everyone who's ever succeeded and has the longevity in the career path that they want. Yeah. Never quit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like literally everyone who's still in whatever their passion was never gave up on their passion. 100%. And like, and now and now they're able to make it a living. Exactly. Yeah. What what you know, some of them obviously a little older, you know what I mean? Right. Maybe more seasoned in their careers, but like it took them that long just to get in those right. positions and like, you know, to me like it's a blessing to wake up and and to be in that position, you Hell know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, Hell that's yeah. how that's how honestly it's been it's been like it's been that type of year for me, you know what I mean? It's like ups and downs, you know, you yeah. take your L but there's been some pretty cool milestones this year alone. So yeah, I'm, I'm you know that's you know it's yeah, cool. How you been, bro? I'm bro. I'm it's been good, a minute, man. I know it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has. I'm good, man. I just been um you know podcasting now, which is yes, crazy because I never thought I'd be doing this. <laughs> but, I had you on my podcast. Was it 2018? Yeah, or yeah it was like yeah, it's a couple years before the yeah, pandemic hit, man. Yeah, and like I remember, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get my man on here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's, he's the mouthpiece. You know what I mean? It was like a year yeah. into me coaching and then not. Yeah. doing music no more right yeah right, so it was right. like a, a different dynamic yeah like i remember that um it, it was but it, you look at you now man with uh, university <laughs> you a hurricane bro I ain't even, it's crazy man, bro. Canes, go canes yeah, baby yeah man know. yeah so it's awesome to see that bro i'm i'm, I'm, I'm happy you and you and the squad are doing it bro. appreciate yeah, it man yeah yeah, yeah we're, we're working man and uh we're just trying to keep you know things going yeah and uh i'm always trying to find new avenues to just Stay active in the sports world, even though I'm not coaching no more. Sure. Um, plus, I got this fucking degree in sports management, bro. I got to use it somehow. You yes, know what sir. I mean? so, yes, sir. Uh, media is like the biggest thing that I still love to do. You know, mm -hmm. even with, with um, 
through music, I was really involved with like film and like the music videos. Exactly. Directing. There's editing. a lot of overlap in all those yeah, three things. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, so, man. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Um, how's your mom's, man? How's your family? Mom's is good, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's um, you know, for just full disclosure, my yeah. mom has cancer, but mm -hmm. she's grinding. This is her seventh, sixth, seventh, yeah, sixth, seventh year. Right. Uh, with her cancer diagnosis, man, living Pushing, the dream, right? bro. Yeah, she just uh, got back traveling. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to moms. That's my that's my best friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad moms. she she out here living. You know what I mean? Yeah. Doing her thing, bro. So that's all it is, man. I'm I'm happy that she's doing her thing. You know what I mean? Hell yeah! It's crazy because I remember when um like you told us about it. Yeah. And like to see like to see um Instagram photos and y'all doing stuff together. Yeah. There was a point where I was like, yo, it's it's gone. Like she, you know, like it's in remission, but yeah. she's she still has cancer. Yeah, you know, it's a stage four diagnosis mm -hmm. in 2017. Matter of fact, it was the day after the um the Vegas shooting. Oh wow. Yeah, October 2nd. It was the worst week of my life. <laughs> no, facts. That's yeah, crazy. Worst yeah. week of my life. And the funny part was the day before we all had a show at um Oh, what is that? Sh what is that venue downtown? It was it was in the arts district. We had a show with all the homies, me, Nick, Nate Quest, Nick okay. Crucial, Asaya Z. Was it the art the artifice? No, no, no. It's a uh, um. Yeah, I feel I have the worst memory. By the way, just just a lot of or, this. Oh, I think I know. Was it was, it was, it was 18B? in the, it, was, or no? it was in the nah, backyard. Uh, it was like in a backyard setting. Uh, uh, uh Velveteen, Velveteen Rabbit. Rabbit. Velveteen yeah, Rabbit. Yeah, sir. Yeah, and we had a show right there in the backyard. Then the next day was the shooting, and the day after that was the diagnosis. So it was like a crazy whirlwind week. Yeah, and like um, you know, we were all scared because like you hear stage four, you're like, damn, what's going on, bro? Right, like, right, you know, like, right. You you thinking this is the end, but like you know, she's here six years strong. We're traveling the world, you know, yeah. experiencing new things. You know, like that's my role dog for sure. You know, what I, mean? I love that man. Yeah, yeah, and so. and, and shouts to your moms, man, for yeah. you know that's that's definitely an inspiration to. Because sure. a lot of people, it's a mindset. Absolutely, you know what I mean. Plus, like yeah. being healthy and taking care of your body. Absolutely, but for a lot of people, it's a mindset. And I feel like when some people when they hear that on themselves, it's like it's it like a just death sentence. For yeah, and they just deteriorate. Yeah. You know, it's what a I'm death saying? sentence for others, but. Somehow, you know, my mom's always been that person that, like, you know, like she takes adversity, yeah, you know, to the chin and just rolls with the punches, you know, what 100%. I mean? so, yeah, shout out to moms, you know. Um, you're over two years sober now, yeah. Uh, uh about how does it feel like not, you know, diluting your body with poisons? <laughs> well, it's crazy, it's been crazy. Um, so it's about two, two and a half years now, roughly, yeah. uh, alcohol, you know, yeah, I still partake in the, the greenery, although I took a little break, but um, yeah. Uh, I got I to gotta hook you up. I'm, I'm going to hook hey, you up with some shout sauce Shout out to stuff. Sauce yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, what's it called? Uh, I've been two and a half years sober. And it was a conscious decision before. It was, you know, I was on a fitness journey. I had lost, yeah. you know, weight and like was working on it. And um, at the time, it was just a, a conscious decision. Like, you know, I'm in nightlife. So yeah. every single set I was... You know, because I smoke all day, every day. I'm high right. as all day. Then you go to the set and, you, you know, you get a bar tab... You know what I mean? So now you drunk and high mm -hmm. after every set, every show, yeah. every night. And you're just like, you know, this was like around the pandemic too. I I, I quit around 2021. So it was like a little after the pandemic, you right. know, we were still a little bit in it. And like, I remember during the pandemic, you know, we kind of all just di dove into our vices. I'm sure everyone did. You oh, know I what did I mean? for sure, man. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that, that shit so, was crazy. It was six pack a day, bro. Exactly. It like crazy. It was like, you know, you just catch yourself. At first, you cop in a six or a 12 pack. You know, you're going to watch the paper boxing pay-per-view yeah. that Saturday. You just go home and like, you know, you, you get a six pack and then it'll be like, oh, a handle. You get a handle. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just devolves into, yeah. you know, I, I never had a problem. I never had, uh, I never was never in a program. I'm thankful for that. I don't have like any addiction, addictive tendencies in that sense but like you just caught yourself like man i'm like yeah at some point i was just like what much. am i doing bro like yeah, yeah like i i'm I, you know i turned 30 at in 2020 mm. so i was just like okay my body doesn't recover as as well as it did yeah that's the same you know what i mean too man yeah. so I, you know at that point i was just like all right you know um actually you know what's funny who inspired me to really do it mm -hmm. was I, I used to listen to um, Bill Burr, Bill Burr's podcast. Okay. Yeah, and he had a podcast where he, you know, talked about it all the time. Like, right. he he's like a drinker. You know what I mean? You know, like, yeah. you know those those Boston East Coast dudes, they drink like that's their thing. And like, yeah. he gave up alcohol for years. 
and he was kind of like journaling it through the podcast, mm-hmm. and it's kind of crazy. I was inspired by him through that. You I, know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't know nothing about that. I yeah, might have to, yeah. to check that out. Yeah, it was like his little podcast that he did, and like he would always bring it up, like uh, just you know, two years and yeah. six months now. Yeah. And like he'll and he'll always like push himself, like maybe if I can go to three, yeah, or how, I don't know how long if if he went back to it. But at the time when I was listening to it, you know, he was always talking about it. I was like, damn, if that fool. Can do, can do it. it. Yeah. I mean, anybody can. Man, yeah. I can do it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, yeah, no, it's kind of like that too. It was, just, and a lot of, um, a lot of it was like a health thing too. And, mm-hmm. and honestly, two year, two and a half years in is the first year was the toughest. Yeah, like because I'm always in night. Like I said, I'm in nightlife. I'm around drunk people all the time. Right. I play a brunch, you know, on Saturdays, and like people are drunk at 11 a.m. Bro, like. <laughs> That yeah. used to be me. <laughs> Sometimes it's still you know like what I'm saying? People, yeah. you got the vibes playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm playing the vibes. People, you know, got them um the the uh you know the unlimited uh, margaritas right. and like everyone's just drinking bottomless bro. mimosas bottomless mimosas. Yeah. You know what I mean? People are smashed, bro. Like people are getting carried out. Sometimes you know, I'm yeah. just like so. At first, it was kind of an adjustment period how to like deal in that social setting. Right. But you know now that um. Two year about within the first year it was like oh, okay I can I can navigate a room now you know right. I can talk to people because this used to be like a liquid courage situation mm-hmm. you get a drink and you get a little you know more brave you got a little more char- charisma now I'm just like oh yeah this is how we you know I talk to someone in a different uh right. you know like different wavelength than me but you know you know it's crazy that I notice uh, when I pull up to events and I'm still sober mm. uh yeah I might be a little bit shy but. There, there is like a type of power that I feel when I'm sober over yeah. people that are like kind of inebriated a little bit. There's a certain clarity, obviously. Yeah, it's a little yeah, bit of that. But, yeah. but then, you know, it's kind of interesting too, because when you deal with someone, like I said, on a different wavelength, mm-hmm. you know, people have different substances of choice, you right, know what right. I mean? They might be combining and mixing or whatever. But like before, like I would always just be high all the time and then yeah. you, you add alcohol into it and then... Sometimes other mix, other things get involved. You know what I mean. Whatever the however the night is yeah. going, and you're just like, dog. I literally get trashed like every single time we go out, and the next day I got shit to do. What yeah, are we doing? That's, that's you know how what I'm it was for me, man. I just recently signed up for a, a marathon. Oh a half hell marathon. yeah, hell yeah. So I noticed immediately. <laughs> are you are you going so sober for until the marathon? Not not all the way sober. Yeah. Uh I I have a like it's it's dialed down a lot. Okay. I used to drink like every day. You okay. know what I mean? Even if it was just one beer. Like, like I used at to the drink. end of the day type. At the of end of the thing. day, yeah. yeah, yeah Cause yeah. you know, you know, we work hard and you yeah. know, it's cool. It's like I for me it was like, you know, cool down with my beer and some peanuts. Like that was my there shit. You, you know yeah. what I mean? So like yeah, yeah, yeah. um but watching sports. Watching you know sports yeah. or catching up on yeah. TikTok or whatever. For what sure. have you? You know For what I'm sure. saying? Yeah. Catching up on the DMs or catching yeah. whatever. So like um catching up on a DM. <laughs> it's, it's different for me, man, because yeah. my DMs are just filled with nonsense. Like right. it used it, you know what I mean? Like people think the DMs is like, oh, people trying to hide like as a rapper, like they in my yeah, DMs. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, when it's DMs is Everyone that I know is sending me some nonsense <laughs> reels. Yeah, for real. Like, that's hey, what I mean by I catching hold up. We, get, we get, like, get hella sidetracked, but you know how it is. Like sometimes you're you're in a conversation with your homies, like in yeah. three different, in like, three different apps. sections. Yeah. There's like an Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, text. And you're, yeah. just like, you're like, bro, like, can we just move this to one? <laughs> we're just sending, they're sending memes and shit. Yeah, it's hella, yeah. hella funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, like, anyway, yeah. So you're, you're in the marathon. Yeah, in the yeah. marathon, and like I catch myself like. um uh, when I first started, I'm like, damn, I'm fucking it, like it hurts. Yeah, it hurts to run. Like I, it, it doesn't feel good. And then, mm. so then I decided to change the whole thing up. Like so, I started eating better. Right. I started not drinking the night before I would run. Yeah. You know, or at least it immensely. Like maybe I might have one cocktail. You know, early on in the evening if it's like yeah. a Friday night yeah. and I'm running Saturday morning. You know, I'm not as disciplined as my cousin. My cousin just erased all that shit out of oh, his man. life. <laughs> but um, I you know like a shake like a shake in the morning with my you know yeah. protein like I do two shakes a shake is just like fruits and veggies with nice. all these nutrients and then yeah. one is just protein and um you know I feel a lot better when I run and I'm getting better at running nice. which and I hate running so this is like a cool thing for me but um but you you are you are a cyc- you a cyclist too so you I were was, already yeah. fit, your but fitness the, right kind of it's different and when you're yeah. cycling you have a little bit of rest time where you can mm. kind of like chill. And the funny thing you say that because when I was cycling during the pandemic, uh, yeah, you and Final were yeah, heavy on we that. Yeah, we was getting yeah. it. Me, yeah, dude, I'm gonna tell you something. 
we would get done, bro, and I would go straight to smoking and drinking. <laughs> Hey, it's been a long day, bro. I got to turn up. We did, man. So, like, I couldn't even say I was doing it healthy. I lost hella weight. For sure. But it's because I was just drinking and, like, you know, my diet wasn't well, man. Like, and, you know, I, we weren't going out to eat, so we just eating what's at the house, man. Right, Rhyming, right, you know, right, shit right. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm happy for you for, for doing that. Oh, for uh, sure. There's definitely a lot of clarity with it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I wish I could, I, and I probably could do it. But I wish I could be that disciplined. There's like a, a lot of respect for people like you that got the discipline. I was for about it. to smoke on the way here because you know I had a pretty long day yesterday, yeah. so I was like, you know, I'm gonna just smoke on the way to the podcast. But I was like, wait, I gotta do a podcast, bro. Like, yeah, it will do. I'm clear. So, I already have terrible memories, so I'm not yeah. gonna remember things. Like, I forgot <laughs> I'm, I'm the sober venue. too. I'm sober too. Like yeah, this, yeah, yeah. the crazy thing is, I don't like to be high doing this un- until we get through. Like right. before, it's like no, no. But like yeah. if we're both like, okay, let's like Jay Spence was here. It's like, yeah, yo, y'all like was we, drinking. We, yeah, we was gone. You know, <laughs> shout dude. out to Jay Spence. I was listening to the episode. That, yeah, that's, that's a cool. He shout had a very cool Spence. story, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, y'all check that out, man. It's really dope. Um, recently you were at Honey's in Brooklyn. Oh, uh, and yeah. It was your first time in New York. Yes, sir. How was that, man? Talk man. to me about it. How'd man, you get that? New, new York is amazing. First off, like, yeah. Um, you know, shout out to the bass goddess, hooked it up. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the homegirl King Marie too for the alley oop on that. Shouts. Um, I played a, a garage party in New York City. We, they did it at Honey's in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Amazing experience. One just to be. Right. It's my first time in the city. Um, I actually, you know, first time I originally booked the trip to see the team. You know what I mean? It was okay. a little Watching Christmas gift. It was a little Christmas gift. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> to myself, you know, I was like, I'm gonna see my team. You know, I haven't been to a home game before, so right, right. I gotta catch my Brooklyn Nets at the Barclays. You know what I mean? And then um, and they just won one fifteen to one hundred three. Oh yes, yeah. Well, you know, um, caught a game at the Clays, mm-hmm. and then I was like, you know what? I might as well line something up too while I'm out there. I think moving forward, like that's the move. Being a freelance yeah. guy, just. Go to a city, you know what I mean? Have the connects, you know what I'm saying? Line something up, play mm-hmm. in that city and like, you know, just make a make a trip out of it. You know yeah. what I mean? And um, so when I was out there, um, first day went to the Clays, you know, it was a whole experience learning how to take the subway, yeah. you know what I mean? Doing the Google Maps and like uh, making sure you, you get, off, make sure you get yeah. off on the right line, you know? And then um, the second day, I, my, my boy Excel is out there in, in, in Brooklyn and mm-hmm. like we kicked it. And he you know toured around uh, a little bit of a little bit of Brooklyn, a little bit of uh, Manhattan. Yeah, just seeing the energy out there is crazy. You know, what yeah. I, mean? I don't see myself living in there out there, but the the energy is so crazy and wild. Like, how could you not go get it if you out there? You know what Man, I mean? That's it, the energy I felt. Out yeah, there. yeah, it's it's cracking. It's it's different. It's kind of like um, the energy in terms of speed is mm. insane because you know you got Vegas over here and you feel like you have that, but there's so much vice around you. It's almost yeah. like you can get distracted. For sure. But in New York, it's like everybody's grinding. Yeah, rent's, everybody's rent hustling. is super expensive, so they grinding. Yeah, you <laughs> People got, got three the jobs. bums is hustling, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like they not out there with the sign. Like they out Bruh. there trying to sell you like grass. Right. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's it's like uh, yeah, everyone's active. The energy was crazy. So my B and B is in Crown Heights. Yeah, it was in Brooklyn, and um, it's a predominantly like West Indie Jamaican neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like walking around was a trip. Like, yeah. You know, um, it very was cultural, like very, a culture shop. Yeah, yeah, weed smell everywhere. Yeah. Uh, jerk, chick, jerk chicken smelling uh, everywhere. And the it jerk was, chicken there is spicy. That, bro, that's they don't all play. I did when I was out there was eat halal food and West Indie Caribbean yeah. Jamaican food. That's all I did, which is because, like, you know what? If I'm going to be out here, I don't get those type of food out here in Vegas. Yeah. So I was going to try that cuisine out there. It was crazy, bro. Like, the energy was crazy. Just on a on like a 5 p.m., right off when you get off the subway, you, you get into the. Everyone's outside. Yeah, like, you know, everyone's outside. Yeah, bro. there's like there's like this one um, the dispensary. They just had a DJ in the. They had like a couple Jamaican dudes just DJing on, on the block, bumping. You know what I mean? And yeah. like just you know just to get people in business. Like all the all the uh, takeout spots was uh, like all the Jamaican patty spots are just busy. Right. You know, people it just I was like the energy is so different. You know, like here in Vegas. It's a driving city. It's a commuter city. That the mm-hmm. way we have it set up here, so everyone is very intentional. Where you go, what side of town you at, whatever, out there, you just hop on the bus. You can be or hop on the train. Yeah, you know, you could, you could be in Harlem in like 30, 40 minutes, and yeah. it's a whole different energy 
vibe yeah. out there, yeah. Then wherever you was at before, you go to Manhattan, like one block away is one little Italy, the next block is Chinatown. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's just so crazy to experience that. And um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, the event, we went to the, you know, uh, the to garage party uh, in Honey's, shout out, like I said, shout out to Bass Goddess. That show was amazing. It was yeah. an incredible experience meeting a lot of cool DJs, cool musicians, and yeah. like... Um, and then I, my last day, I, I ended up linking with the homie Hunter Lamar and homie Dev England. We made music out there. So it was like a cool experience just to, like the whole trip was just like this one creative, inspirational yeah. thing. Like, I, I, yeah. You know You're I mean? definitely going back. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely, definitely going I'm back. I'm definitely going back in the spring, summer. You know what I mean? The yeah. rooftop parties need me, man. Yeah, they yeah. do, man. Hey, you need some OG moose the, in that thing, The rooftop man. parties is no joke. I've been seeing the videos, like, because, you know, like, I'm just, like, doing my research. Like, yeah. oh, what the parties I like out there, bro? The rooftop parties is litty in the summer, bro. Yeah, that's what it is out there. Sweaty. Yeah, that's what just, everybody was is just, out doing. Yeah. yeah. And that's one thing I noticed, too, because we went to a couple parties that night. Yeah. And I was just like, bro, people, I've been... You know, like of course here in Vegas, you know we're this, we're a party town, like yeah. you know. Um, but like the the energy out there, people, you know, you play the right song here, you know, the vibe will get right, but then it'll die down quick because everyone's too cool, low key. Yeah, out there, bro, people was just vibing. They don't give a fuck. They don't yeah. give a fuck. I mean, if you were the right DJ, you're gonna play the banger set for your whole set and right. have everyone moving. But you know, out there, just people was just dancing and vibing regardless of what you playing. And yeah. I just like that. That's to me, it's like, all right, there's a there's a taste level, there's a a, a choice that people are making. Like, I'm gonna have fun today. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it was a Friday too, so you know, I hope that that type of energy, you know, I can't wait to be in those type of rooms, situations all again. over the world because I know like that those rooms exist where people just need. Quality music, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Just, just quality to, fun, man. Quality fun, just, is, yeah. to get out of a you know a long day, you know yeah. a long week, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, I definitely yeah that that definitely like inspired me and you know got my got my engine rolling again for you know I'm mean, I'm excited for 2024, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. When I seen yeah when I seen you post that you were spinning in New York, I was like yeah he's gonna love that shit, man. Yeah, that dude, he, have you been? You been? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love New York, man. I've yeah. been there several times. Um, I've been out there with. With my boy Noel, I'm uh, Benny Boss's brother, oh, Goose, right, 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 my boy right, right. Goose, yeah. and um, went out there with Gene. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's a uh, it was always a different experience with everybody because especially when it was their first time, you know, right. it's like I almost kind of felt like a tour guide, you know, I'm like yo, <laughs> let me show you how to get around. It's funny though because when when I went to the I went to watch an Islanders game All at right. the Clays. All right, but I also um, took some time because Gene was out. He had he had at the time he had some girl with him, so they were exploring. I was solo. So I was like, I'm going to go do some, you know, yeah. just go check out what's going on in the scene and where stuff. Were you, where were you guys staying? Uh, I was staying in Brooklyn. Nice. Yeah. yeah I yeah. just felt like Brooklyn, Brooklyn is, is the dope. spot, man. Yeah. Just every neighborhood is so different. And, yeah. yeah. They got, the the, they got good food. Yeah. They got the Cuban food right there. Yeah. And yeah. The funny thing is, I was Crazy. at, um, when I went to Barclays, I was just walking. You know, Jay-Z said something about 550 State. That's where he used to hustle and shit. Mm. Stash spot. Mm. So I go to 550 State. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. I'm looking at it. I'm like, damn, he's not lying. Like he's really. This is this is where he used to stash his shit, and he used to be on the rooftop. I'm sure it probably didn't look as glorious as, as, yeah, as it is now. Yeah, very gentrified now. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah it yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. So then yeah. I'm like, but this is where he used to, you know, do his his deeds, man. Bro, like, tell me why the whole time I was out there. I was just listening to New York music the yeah. whole time. And I'm like seeing streets and like neighborhoods and yeah. just like, I'm like, every artist I grew up listening to was shouting these streets out, yeah. these corners out, these locales out. And like, I'm listening to Tribe. I'm listening to to like Reasonable Doubt on the, yeah. you know what I mean? On the plane ride over, like, on, you know, on the taxi ride from LaGuardia to Brooklyn. I was just listening to like all my favorite artists and Nas. I'm just like, damn, bro. Like, this energy is crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, That's the only yeah. place I haven't been to is Queens. I haven't been to that borough yet. I, mean, I, I didn't spend too much time out there, yeah. but um, yeah, for sure. Like uh, next time I'm there, I'm definitely gonna spend a little longer and like, you know, make a make a couple weeks out of it and just explore. Like I didn't get to visit Brooklyn. I mean, t I, never, I didn't get to visit the Bronx. Yeah, I didn't the Bronx to, is dope, man. Yeah, I didn't. You want to talk Brooklyn. about like classic New York look? Yeah, I'm assuming the Bronx crazy is like there. as soon as you get yeah. off the train, um, it's it's fucking. Yankee yeah. Stadium, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. yo, this is just like, like, uh, uh I would have loved to experience. Movies. I would have loved to experience Uptown too. Like, I know it's yeah. like it must have been so, like, 
like the energy must have been so different from where I was in Manhattan. It just to probably have been like in the Harlem uptown area would have been dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, Harlem is dope, man. Like when I went to Harlem, I, I had to go see the Big L mural. So mm, I went and see, seen that. I went to the nice. to the to the danger zone, is what he called it in his songs. Okay. So I'm chilling there just at the basketball park. Like Damn. everyone's looking like, but I'm like, man, this is people don't realize, man. I'm here to pay my respects. Right, Low key, yeah. right, 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 right. And right, then right. you know, you see 126 and Lennox, and I'm like, yeah. let me just mob down here. And, I'm, yeah. and it was dope. Like the day that I went, um, I guess they do this every like weekend, but they had like all the vendors out, the street vendors. They had nice. people playing the buckets, they had people yeah. dancing. Singing and shit, like they shut down the block. They shut down the block, like every, like, and I guess they do it every weekend. And I'm That's like, awesome. yeah, I was yeah. like, damn, dude, I like, I love New York, man. Like yeah. the vibe. I don't know if I could live there. You know what I mean? I really like this. There's no uh, state income tax life, but absolutely, I, I, you know what I mean? Like maybe two months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe two months. I'm saying, bro, like I, I definitely will be back. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's sure. one of those cities like you just need to experience. And like drop in, and, right. you know, go back home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you were also spinning in the Philippines. Oh yeah, and that was year. like your first time spinning in the Philippines, yes. was it? Yeah. So I was at. So you know, I don't know if you noticed, I, I was born out there. I was born in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew you, you was born out there. I was born in Quezon City. You know yeah. what I mean? And like um, before, uh, you know, I never would have thought about like coming back for music, but. Um, this trip ended up being a family trip. Also, it was like my boy's wedding. Shout out to my boy Cass and my girl Jessica. Shout, Shout out to, to them. Man. You know what I mean? It was their, uh, It was like a reunion with all the homies. Mm -hmm. So like, I was like, yo, I should line a couple things up. So yeah. um, I hit I had, I had hit up a couple promoters and um, and this is the crazy part about all the places I've played recently, like Hawaii, in the Philippines, in Brooklyn. Um, I hit up you know a couple promoters or whatever, a couple DJs or whatever, and like every single one of them were like. Yo, I, I play your edits, your remixes yeah. on SoundCloud. <laughs> that's I'm hard, like, bro. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. You, yeah. you never know who's listening. Yeah, that's true, You know true, what I mean? Man. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so like I, I hit up a couple homies. Shout out to the homie Dwayne Insane in the Philippines. Sucked it up. I yeah. played a couple gigs in this uh, neighborhood called Poblacion in Makati. And mm -hmm. it's like this like, that's like the nightlife scene out there. Bro, okay. we play it on a Wednesday uh, um, in like... In this little, in this uh, second floor club, third yeah. floor club at in Poblacion, bro. We had our homies, you know what I mean. Our homies was thick. We had about fifty people in there. Damn, you know? yeah, it was deep because it was for it was, a wedding. It was yeah, for a wedding. Filipinos yeah. were deep for the wedding. Yeah, bro. yeah, from all over the world. We was, yeah. you know what I mean. We were in our in the motherland. The energy was definitely crazy, you know what I mean. But like, yeah, in there it was just like everyone was getting down, bro. On a yeah. Wednesday, bro, like Filipinos, you know, it's a drinking. It's a drinking party scene out there right. for sure, you 100%. know. Like so, like everybody's just vibing on a Wednesday night, bro. And I'm just like, wow, this is crazy. I wonder what their weekends like. And I played a Saturday out there, same neighborhood. And that one was like this room. It was like 60 people in this room, bro. Damn. It's like a max 60 people. It's a small room, right? But it had like 40, 50, 100, like 50 people outside in just the patio area, just, just vibing listening out. to the music inside. I'm just like, yo, this. That, yeah, the, that's literally catching the vibe right there. <laughs> exactly, and like the experience was so crazy playing music for you know my people, like our, our you know like our 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 like minded people. Like there's there's definitely a connection ancestral wise, you know, right. not to get too deep about it, but like you know like there's a type of that's why you know the the stereotype is how Filipinos love karaoke, right? Yeah. Music's in our blood, bro. It is, like man. it's it genetically is. just in 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 tune with us. Like right. our our ancestors speaking through us to like rhythm and and melodies, bro. Like 100%. you know what I mean. So like when you play out there, you just kind of play the bangers and like people just relate and like hear the same things that we listen to out here, bro. Like and that's the one thing, too. and I appreciate the same music. That was that's a, that was a great experience. I definitely can't wait to go back, man. Like yeah. playing the Philippines was crazy. Then you know. It was my boy's wedding in Tagaytay, which is this like vacation spot about two hours from uh, uh, Manila. Okay, and it's like this nice province uh, in Batangas, actually. Okay, and like um, and like yeah, it was just a beautiful. Yeah, played that wedding, you know what I mean? And it was just, just a greatest experience just to have to be able to play, you know, use my craft out there. You know what I right. mean? In 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 my in the motherland, it was an amazing experience, bro. When you when you travel to these different states, countries to DJ, uh, you just bring in the laptop, or you got to bring your turntables. Um, or... So for the for those ones, I ended up bringing like my controller that I yeah. had, 
Um, but like now, like for the New York one, you just it was USBs, bro. Like, yeah, because I mean, <laughs> people just just yeah. pop in the sticks. It was just an hour set, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, like I think you know, depending on depending on the venue, obviously, you know, I always bring my laptop with me just to prep yeah. your set or whatever. Like I like to put a set together for an hour just so I know this is my transitions. I gotta play the hits. I got I I make edits for these specialty edits for these sets. Yeah. Just to make it like a, you know, uh, so I'll cook it up that weekend, you know, just right. to feel the vibe. Talk to local people, like, hey, what's ha- what's hitting out here? What what people like, you know, and like just just to see what the what people's energy is like. You right. know, you go to a couple of bars or events to see what people are listening to, and then you know, I, I, that's how I formulate usually sets for like these out of town trips. You know what I mean? And I do that here too in Vegas. You know what yeah. I mean? I have my residence here. She's here. I always ask people, what are you guys listening to? Whatever, what's what's, what's the energy like? You know, yeah. and then you. Kind of adapt your, your 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 prep for your sets that way. You know what I mean by yeah. like just asking. So yeah, personally, like moving forward, I just I know I'm I'm always gonna always research like the type of demo that's gonna be coming to these sets. Like you know what 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 what's that demo listening to yeah. right now? What what are, what's the audience like out there? What are the whether what what artists are they you know resonating with? And most of the time, it's a lot of this shit we listen to, honestly. Yeah, what we grew up on, you know. What I mean, everything's everything's nostalgia now. You know yeah. what I mean? So especially if you cutting your own little remixes and stuff, like people yeah. going, you know, oh shit, you know, yeah. like it's just anytime I hear like a classic, like with some new drums or some shit, mm, or or yeah. like a new sample behind it, I'm like, yeah. damn, that shit's cold. Or like how they how you can finesse like a certain theme so that. You know, like the ten minutes that you're in, you a couple genres. You know, mm-hmm. I, for me personally, like I like to go into five, six different genres in one hour. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, if you can somehow finagle like a specific nostalgic hit, right, with like Afrobeat or I'm a piano, and then be able to transition as you keep moving up to like a little. You could garage your like house music, yeah, and then you go into like you know what I mean, like you switch up to like 140, 150, and then you get down to 75, 80 BPM, and then you start getting to some R and B, hip hop joints. It's it's like it's it's crazy, like just Man, to see what people are vibing with, you know. Me and my girl and my brother, we went to uh, Cancun, and we were nice. just like walking around, and we ended up at this fucking like hookah spot, you know, to to uh, to smoke some hookah, right? But the DJ was Killing it, nice. Like which exactly what yeah, you just yeah, said. Yeah. The hour we were there, he went through like five or six genres. It's a science, brother. Yeah, it's, it's the science. Afro beat into some classic yeah. hip hop into like quick house and yeah. all that shit. And I was like, damn. And I was vibing on all of it, bro. The yeah. way he blended it, and I'm like, you know what? It don't even like the that. That's the universal language is music. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I mean. Like you don't even if they're speaking a different language, but yeah. the rhythm, the vibes, the melodies, like. It doesn't matter what they're saying almost. You just kind of yeah. feel it. You know what I'm saying? So we had a good time with that. Like, just that. Like, I just brought it up with me. Like, you know, I play a, um, uh, like a, a, a reggaeton, like, you know, more Spanish style yeah. sets on Saturdays. And like there, I can get away with a lot of like Afrobeat at my piano shit because a lot of the rhythms are similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just that just goes to tell you, bro, like that, those sounds are like, you know, between the Atlantic Ocean, separated mm-hmm. by the Atlantic Ocean from different areas, but the rhythms are similar. Those African percussions, yeah. those like Latin his, uh, percussions, those melodies and, are all similar. You know what I mean? That's why I see really the universal language because you could be playing some, you know, like you could drop some German shit, but just because you don't understand what they're saying, the, the melodies is still hitting. This this like, where you get like, them. It's, it could be a German soul sample, and then you, mm, you run it into to like, oh shit, Jay Z used this shit. Exactly, and that's like, exactly. Oh, those are those are always yeah. yeah. Those are always hitting when you play the original yeah. sample. Like you know, lately I've been dropping a lot of like um like there's just act <laughs> I really love them. New Jeans, right? It, yeah, it's, it's from South Korea. Like you just play their shit. People don't know what the hell they're saying. But, yeah, but like it hits, man. It's hitting. Yeah. Like I just, you know, that's just the music is the universal language, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Before we touch into to your music, I want to get into um, oh yeah, residencies. Where you at? Where could people go and listen to you? Um, right now? here in Vegas, yeah. uh, I play every Friday at uh, the Virgin Hotel at okay. the Commons Bar, and um, I play a brunch at the Ellis Island at Front okay. Yard on Saturdays, and sometimes I play at the Palms as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, like you know. 
trying to lock in some stuff. So follow me on OG Moose LV on all social media. You know what I mean? So wait, where uh, at at uh, what time at Virgin? At Virgin five to nine, like a little happy. Okay, hour man, set I'm at the, at I mean, I'm at to stop by, man, yeah, man on yeah, Friday. Yeah, get a drink. Get all, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a vibe, you know. Like I'm controlling the music for the casino floor, so it's like a nice little energy in there. Like, like I, I being able to like you know be like the table setter for the vibes yeah. in, in like a whole casino is kind of crazy because like sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll get really like crazy with it like I'll, I'll just play like Janet Jackson Jay Dilla like like <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. hit them with some vibes that they've, they'll never hear in a casino yeah, floor you know never. what I mean and, you know yeah. you gotta you give them two for them one for me you know what I mean but what happens is those people that are visiting mm. they're gonna end up coming back to the casino because sure. they think they can hear for it sure. again Yeah, like one time you know, so that's one of the crazy things about that. So, you know, I'm playing the casino floor. So sometimes people will just come back to the to, mm -hmm. to the DJ booth like, yo, what the hell? You be playing some crazy shit for the last two hours. Yeah. This one lady like tipped me $80 in chips. Damn. It was her birthday. And like for the three hours that she was there playing at the yeah. thing, she kept winning. And like, you've been my lucky, you know, you've been playing Usher. You've been playing all my songs. It's my birthday. She threw me like $80 in chips. I was like, damn. Like, that's fire, man. That's just the energy in that casino. Like, I was just like, yeah, like, you, 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 that's why I personally, like, of course, they give you the, you know, the, like, you got to play top 40. It's a top yeah. 40 room, whatever, whatever. So you, you do that. Like I said, it's two, two, three for them, one for me. You know, yeah. you hit them with like a little sauce. You never know who's in there. Like, there's people that fuck with you, it. Did you just yeah. play? Yeah. So, you know, I always love that. And I yeah. love that about DJing. That's yeah. one of the things why I fell in love with this craft because it's a science. Yeah. There's an art form into it. Like, really, like, it's not just playing records and thinking, oh, yeah, this one's going to hit with it. Like, no, it's a science for yeah. real. Especially like, you because you're a musician. And you know? that was the transition. It was so smooth because, right. like, for me, like, the reason why I made music was because I loved music, yeah. listening to it, growing up with it. Like, my family was musicians, you know what I mean? So, like, growing up with records and stuff. And, like, you realize, like, there's this whole career, you know, of DJs, of these these people who make careers out of just loving yeah. music. Is that you how you I mean? is that how you got into music? You said your family was musicians. How'd you, yeah. how'd you evolve into, like, what's your origin story getting into music? So... Um, when I was growing up, I grew up in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, my uncle lived with us, and he was like a music nerd. He was mm -hmm. a bass player. My mom, she was a pianist. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, and a guitarist. So like, yeah, like we had like music in our family in our lineage. And then, but there, like growing up, it was just like they would have just Motown and soul R and B records yeah. going to you know like going to the grocery store in the car. You know what I mean? On Sundays, cleaning the house, like listening to Earth, Winter, Stevie Wonder. You know what I mean? Like, That's crazy in the Philippines too. You know what yeah. I mean? And then moved to Hawaii. When I was in Hawaii, I was in elementary school. I uh, started doing like um, like ukulele lessons. Yeah. So I learned how to play the ukulele. Then I was in middle school. I uh, joined the band. Yeah. And um, in that time, you know, I was I was. First chair at tenor and alto saxophone, you know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah, um, flex on it real quick. You know what I mean? And then like, you know, just loving music through obviously listening to, you know, yeah. where hip hop has. And this was just like at the peak of like the beginning of the blog era mm -hmm. and the forums. So just really getting heavy into the nerd stuff. And like um, you know, I had I been miss writing those days, man. I mean, we'll talk I think yeah. we'll talk about that later too. But um a lot of it was just like um I started like my first diving into the creative part of it, um, I was probably in sixth grade. I was I used to watch like Deaf Poetry Jam all the time on HBO. Oh, I love that shit. Yeah, you know? and um, the most Deaf used to host shout that to shit. Yeah, you know, Yasin Bay. Yeah, and like um, I would just have like book like books, just writing poems and write, writing raps like that in sixth grade. You know, and then from there, I remember the biggest turning point. It was around two thousand three. I don't know if you guys remember Zanga. Yeah, man. Remember Zanga? Yeah. Zanga. X A N G A. Yeah, com. yeah, yeah. Like one of the OG <laughs> yeah. forum social medias back then, yeah. right? And like my sister had just put this record on her profile by this rapper named Kanye West. It was called We Don't Care. Mm. It was from a leak uh, of the early college dropout, yeah. 2003. I was like, yo, what is this? He's like, all right, you should check it out. And then I looked him up. They had just dropped through the wire. Yeah. All falls down. It was. You know, OG before YouTube, it was like called Yahoo Music, where you could watch videos on the website. Yeah, and like that's my first time exploring, you know, learning about Kanye's music, and he was like my like entry point into this whole other world of hip hop that I never knew it before. Because before you just kind of listened to what was on the radio, right? You know, like and but 
with him, I was in sixth grade, like my mind was blown. I was like, there's this whole other world I never knew. He was my entry point was him, then learning about, you know, uh Mos Def and Talib, yeah. Common. You know, I was listening to a lot of <laughs> Chicago music <laughs> because well, of it them. was popping back then. Yeah. Chicago rappers would like a lot like, of do or die and stuff. Yeah, and then, they were the ones, man. And then listening to a lot of new obviously New York stuff and just diving deep in that because you know, all the artists that he worked with, you know, and then going keep going back and further and further, you like listen to Tribe and then you listen to the records that Tribe sampled. Yeah. You know, and like um and just loving hip hop through that lens of just like, okay, there's this conscious, soulful side that I embrace because I couldn't relate to people in the streets, man. Like, yeah, you, you know what I mean? There, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't know about selling yeah. a ball, you know I mean? <laughs> yeah. pushing crack or cooking with a Pyrex stove. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there was this other side of it that was just so musical and so mm-hmm. soulful that I ended up learned loving. You know what I mean? And like, um, how old were you when you like started like penning your penning rhymes and stuff? About six, about in sixth grade. So oh damn, old, middle school. That? Yeah, wow. middle school. Yeah, and then. Seventh grade, like yeah, co- college dropout was the pivotal changing point. It was two thousand four. Yeah, I remember, uh, like taking a a, a uh, like a city bus to go to Circuit City, and then picking up college dropout, mm. the pink CD, popping it in the C- the, CD the, the CD player Walkman on the on the bus with the no right, skip, listen. yeah, no skip, but it's still skip though. <laughs> That's the problem. Though, yeah. It's still skipping. <laughs> then you just putting it in my ears, and it was just this. I remember that first listen. Yeah, and that changed my whole perspective on life. You know That's what I mean? crazy. Because yeah. like like this music just like in the crazy part was like reading the liner notes like, yo, he produced these. Yeah. You know, it was rare at that time for the artist himself to be producing and, you know, actually like programming his own stuff. You know what I mean? And like reading the liner notes, those were always the days was just like you'd be listening, oh, this oh, sample this. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this sample this. Oh, this guy played the trumpet on this. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I know that name. You know what I yeah. mean? It's crazy. So that was when I really dove into like, I'm going to make music. Oh, that's fire. In seventh grade. Yeah. You know? It was mainly just writing or were you like, you know what? I want to get like a keyboard. Um, like... So because I was in band, we yeah. had like a little band room and we would always mess around with like... You know, we we never had like you know obviously DAWs and like you know sequencers and anything like that, but we we're just pl- messing around with other musicians. Like we would look low key be jamming in our lunch breaks. You know what I mean? Right. Like 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 during the lunch, just like we would be in the band room. It would be the class right after lunch, and we would just all be there. All the musicians just kind of mess around. Somebody be on the drums. We would be some. You know, I was messing a little bit on keys and stuff like that. We just all mess around, just like. Re- Replaying, interpolating records from mm. the CDs, you know, the albums we were listening to. This was around 2004. So, like, a lot of those records from that time, like Speaker Box Love Below and like. Man, your band room must have been lit. If I was your band teacher, I'm like, yo, Look, what are you Shout doing? out to Mr. Fukaya. I hope he's, I don't know if he's still alive, but like, Jouse you, he man. changed my life too. He was one, Dope. like, it was a pivotal time that era, that era of my, that era of my life because, like, I was so entrenched in music. And of course, I was playing basketball in school and, like, Know, going to basketball practice, I would have my saxophone with me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it would just be that type of thing. Where just like, I feel like this is becoming my life. Like I could feel like it Early taking on over. Too, I, yeah. I felt like I felt like oh wow, like this was this was like what fueled me. And yeah. like um, I moved to Hawaii in ninth grade, summer of ninth grade. It was two thousand six. Uh, I was on the bus and I met this cat named Davon George. Mm. Um. He taught me how to make music. Like we ended up chopping it up, and like we're cool. He ended up, he ended up showing. Uh, you know, we went back to his crib that year, and like that first year, I was learning how to make beats on FL Studio, FL Game. Nice, you know what I mean? And nice. that's that was my first introduction into producing. Yeah. And uh, ever since then, you know, the rest is history, as they say. Like, just. Took it, ran from it, ran, ran, ran with it. You know what I mean? And like, I remember when I first, when I first heard about you, um, it was through a mutual. Um, who was, he was actually your teacher. Yeah, but he was my he was my music engineer. At we were the gonna. Time. T- I was gonna bring this up. Yeah, yeah and uh, I just remember um, he hit me up because I was working. Nick with Hotchkiss. Him. Yeah, shout out to Nick Hotchkiss. Uh, he's over there at the Hideouts Recording Studios now. So he's you know big big moves, big moves. Um, but uh, I, I can't even remember how I was introduced to him. I know, I know the story. Did he or, tell you? Or, 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 or between us? Oh, I know, yeah, I know yeah, us. Yeah, but yeah, in yeah. terms of me and him, I can't remember. But I just remember we were working, and you know, it was my first time actually being like in a studio when I had an engineer, and I wasn't mm. pressing record and running to the mic. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, 
timing it eight bars before. <laughs> yeah, like this yeah. is. I, it got to the point where I was telling Nick, like, yo, I just need a half a bar, and yeah. then I can go. But anyway, he sent me. He hit me up. He's like, yo, uh, one of my students. Uh, he's dope, fresh with it. He's looking for a master. Yeah, he's looking some somebody to master or or make, I can't remember. It was mixing yeah, the master. Was, uh, I was looking for. I was uh, low key. So this was, this was the move, right? This was yeah. the move. I was like, because I was starting to get close with Nick, uh, and like. He was like, yo, play me some of your music. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm working on this album. I played it for him. I was, I was low-key trying to nudge him to like maybe he he or someone he knew could master it, you know, because like he was he was kind of sick with it, you know? And yeah, I was he's just, nice, man. Yeah. So I was just like, you know, you should check it out, man. See, see what it sounds like. You know, it's still like, you know, about 60, 70% done. I was like, why are you why are you going to school here? I was at it was yeah. I was at our institute, you know what I mean? Well, why are you going to school here? I'm like, Honestly, because I want to learn how to master and like be like and to be able to be in the stu like to be the engineer in the studio, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I was trying to do it. But he was like, "Look, uh, you don't even need like this program like that, like you know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> just be real, just, so, just be yeah. real, like because you, you know that's one here, thing yeah. I learned when I was at our institute was just like a lot of the people there were learning, yeah." How to be in from this zero yeah, level? Yeah, from zero. Yeah. Like there would be people in the military using mm -hmm. their free uh, college education program, whatever they have in the military, like joining this fresh off. You yeah, know what I mean? I'm like, making beats. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to engineer. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. And it's like, um, yeah. So I played him the album. I was like, so what you think? You know what I mean? He told me he's like, yo, why do you come here? And I'm like, man, I'm honestly, you know, I'm I need this album mastered. You know what I mean? I'm trying yeah. to learn. He's like, look, you should hit up my boy, yeah. uh, Marion Wright. Yeah. And I'm like. Oh, I've seen that name. I've seen it on Toad Two Dope Boys. I like, you know, I'm familiar with the community here in Vegas. Right. So I was still a little fresh, so, uh, you know, I knew you guys because I think, if correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think you were one of the um, the openers for a Schoolboy Q show at Hard Rock. Yeah, it was uh, it was Ramon actually. Ramon, but okay. we did he uh, we did a song together. He, he always had. Uh, he was always shy doing stuff on his own, so like we always did like yeah y'all was squat y'all was squat yeah, yeah so yeah, we always yeah. did a song we had together so yeah, that there's people like, there oh, yeah, yeah. I know that name I was like oh yeah I know that I've seen I've seen your name before I was like oh yeah let me hit him up yeah and yeah and then from there we linked up you know what I mean yeah, and you, it's crazy because um when he when he gave it to me I was you know he was like um you know this dude needs his joints mastered and I'm yeah. like okay cool like. That's dope because I never really thought people would come up to me. I didn't know. This is when I figured out like, oh shit, I, I could almost make a living doing the back end work. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Because I didn't know people were like, that like the mixes I was doing or because I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. I was just kind of copying YouTube and then just using my ear. But um, I can't I, I, I can't remember if like, because uh, I was charging cats to mix and master their projects um, but I can't remember if it, if I did that with you or if it was exchange of beats. I what, can't remember exactly what, what it was. I was trying to re remember it now. I think or earlier today, I was trying to think back. Like, oh yeah, okay. So the the story was, you listened to it, you liked what you heard. And yeah, he was like, I'll give you a discount. We got to make some music. Yeah, I think that's what I think. Yeah. You just gave me like a deposit, and after that, I was yeah. like, yo, let's just. Yeah, just... like he was like, you just gave me yeah. a super nice discount. I was yeah. like, yo, but we got to make some music. I was like, yeah. all right, bet. And do you remember our first time like linking up? Like yeah, I pulled up, me. I pulled up to your apartment. He was like, "Hey, pull up to my apartment." It was your yeah. apartment, kind of on Las Vegas Boulevard. I remember. Okay, it. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, um, and he was like, uh, "Like, all right, yo, play me some beats." You know, we smoked up, and I, you know, hit play on my album. The first beat I played, that's the beat you picked yeah, from well, one of your records. I think it was a record called Sugar. If I'm not mistaken. No way, that was the first joint. That's the first wow. beat I played, and it was crazy. He's like, "Yeah." Yeah, well, yeah, run that. I don't even need to hear other shows. Nah, let me play you some other shit. I've been working on these all week, bro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, but yeah, you ended up picking that, and then um, Sugar's a banger, man. Yeah, that, that Sugar's was, a banger. It ended up being one of your. Uh, one I performed that every time. Nice. Every time I did a show after that song came I, out, I, I remember I Sugar, vividly. Bro. You was at Brooklyn Bowl, and uh, we were all there to support you. You, you had yeah. a show at Brooklyn Bowl. I appreciate all y'all for that. Man. And then, like, you told us to come with you on stage. It was yeah. crazy. We oh, damn, turned that's up right. With you. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, it was crazy. He was, yo, my boy Moose did that. I was like, oh, shit, girl. Like, I remember I did, that, I did man. do this song. <laughs> I remember man. that. I, lo I love that song, man. It's a banger. It's yeah, a, yeah. to perform, you know? Yeah. Um, And, and uh, man, it's crazy, man, because at that time, there was only, like, three or four more years left of me doing music, man. That's crazy. And we only yeah. did, like... A couple more joints after that, man. Yeah. I think so. And like, that's the cool thing, cause like, you know, not to age you or anything, yeah. but like, 
you guys like your generation really like 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 set the table for us, you know, right. paved the way for my, you know, generation of Vegas artists to right. really like um you know, be able to unite and be a community. Right. Your your era was like a little more prior to you guys, we're a little more divided and you guys, mm. you know what I mean, brought a lot of artists, dope artists together, you know what I mean? Your yeah. generation did and like it was cool to like uh, you know, to to be you know cool with y'all and like experience that type of world you know what I mean like our first shows and our first like things were just experiencing it through your guys' lens you know yeah. what I mean so it was, we it was, we did the same thing y'all did too though yeah. we we were like in the in the trenches you know yeah. what I like to call it we was in the trenches before all that but that thing that was one thing I was like uh, towards the end I don't even say towards the end but it was just like at that time uh, where I was at Black Gold and all those projects that I was doing. For everyone that's like new to this show, I used to do music back in the day. But uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> He was an amazing musician <laughs> at, at one point in time, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then uh, I wanted to like get the people that, uh, I wanted to help the people that were dope to me. I wanted to like just get them on as much as I could, you know. And it's that's the coach in you, bro. Yeah, it's that's it's, the Pat Riley in you, bro. It's tough though because people yeah. are kitting me up for gigs, mm. and then I'm like, but I'm an artist. Yeah, but yeah. I want like can can what about this dude? Can we get him on too? It's always a no. They just need one opener, right? Right. So then I'm like, all right, well, they're just gonna hop on the song with me. Like I got a song with Nick and Nate, so I always would do yeah. that. I'd bring them or whatever. But one time they hit me up. I was there, like, yo. Uh, we're opening. We need, I need you to open for. Um, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Ghostface and Raekwon. And I was like, done deal. It's one of my favorite dudes, right? And they're like, we need another person. And I was like, oh, I didn't get trade. Mm. Trade Voorhees on here. Shout out to Trade Voorhees. Yeah, and then I remember I, I got trade on on at Brooklyn Bowl, and he was, you know, he was on fire with his set. And yeah, man, it was just like a lot of a lot of it was just you know getting people on, man, because I knew how hard it was to get on, dude. For sure, you know and. A Sometimes lot of the dope shit need, I heard, bro, was like, yo, this shit needs to be on. <laughs> you just need, some people just need a chance sometimes. That's it. That's you know, all it is, you're man. in a position to do yeah. it, you know, you should always be able to help out. Yeah. You know? Who Who's uh, your favorite artist to work with in the city? Or so far, even if they're not in the city, who do you like to work with the most? Man. Well, for, you know, I've made a lot of good music out here in the city. Yeah. I will say, um, it, he's not from the city, but one of my favorite artists to work with is the homie Jeff Burnett. Mm. Yeah, he's yeah. he's based out in L.A. He's from Reno, based out in L.A. But with him, I love working with him just because it's so natural. Yeah, he's yeah he's you know, a solid musician. Solid musician, and you know that's sometimes all you need is just someone. You just play the song, right? You know, maybe you wrote the line, or maybe he, you know what I mean. He doesn't even, you know what I mean. Just need a couple couple takes or whatever, and then, yeah, I just love sending music to yeah. him, and you know what I mean. We worked on a lot of records. He's a singer, together. right? Yep. Yeah, and we, you know. I produced one of his uh, records earlier this year, and like I'm just yeah, he's one of my favorite artists to work with. But you know, like I think here in the city, I think one of the coolest things is to see everyone grow. Yeah, and yeah. everyone has like their you know like their own style, and like right. it's so yeah, it's, it's it, that's one thing that too. Like I I just noticed that like as we've gotten older, everyone you know maybe maybe isn't making music anymore, or, right? You know, growing uh, growing away from the scene. You know, like me and you like. We're, you know, I haven't released in a couple years, you know, right. like, and like, I started to really like come to terms with the idea, maybe not stepping away completely, but understanding that, you know, my place from that era of being like a, a active artist creating all day, every day, yeah. you know, maybe uh, there's other avenues I can take to yeah, be right. a creator. Yeah, DJing yeah, is one a, of them. Being yeah. a DJ. Production, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that's one of the things that like really, like that's one of the last couple of years have really like opened my eyes to. Yeah. Is just like maybe, you know, being a full-time musician, being a Grammy winning songwriting producer and all that, you know, those dreams that we had before, maybe that isn't the end all be all. Nah, definitely not. You know what I mean? Definitely sometimes, not. sometimes being a working class musician, like, like one of my favorite rappers is Fonte from Lil Brother. Yeah. And he's made a career being like, you know, surgical, being, you know, uh you, you can throw him into anything. He could be a songwriter for a TV show. He's done podcasts. He's yeah. he's he's a full time musician. He's done music with like his record label with Foreign Exchange, like mm -hmm. and he's still his solo artist. And like 
Like that build type your own of, lane, man. You build your own lane, being useful with your skills. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like you you hone these skills for years and you can take it with you no matter wherever it takes you. You know yeah. what I mean? And and being just like I think being useful. Like you have all these skill sets that you, like I said, you hone, like you're like a samurai. And you know you're a trained hired gun. You're a yeah, hired gun. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know what I mean. And if you're you're a be be to be useful to you for you, for you to provide your skill set to whatever project or whatever thing you're 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 they need you in, like that is a bigger asset than being some world famous Grammy winning whatever. You know what I mean? Like because because sometimes those levels are you know aren't as realistic to attain. But there's a way to be a working class person yeah. in this low, industry, low key. You know? There's a lot of Grammy award winning uh, musicians that no one knows about. Exactly, but they they made the songs, right? You know, right, and right, right. they're much a Grammy winner as much as the artist is. You know, right. everyone that was a part of that record is a Grammy winner. Exactly, you know what I mean. So like, there's still a way to to achieve those goals. Exactly. You know, without having to be the number one yeah, artist like in the face, world. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to be that. Exactly. You know, and I think when. Um, I think that was one of the things with me was like, man, because I was that's what I was trying to achieve. I was mm. trying to be like the number one artist, you know, yeah. like, and then it, it's difficult. It's damn near, uh, it's a, you know, it's a roll, it's a, a dice roll, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, plus with some talent, you know, and sometimes you don't even need talent. Right. But um, yeah, man, I think when you when you can figure that out and be like, I don't need to be that, and still create. Yeah, uh, man, you can still reach. It's some, a lot of it is kind of like being on a basketball team, being a part yeah. of a basketball team. You have you you come in. I'm trying to put up twenty, yeah. <laughs> twenty five. <laughs> no, you're but, not. <laughs> but then you realize like you're in a part. You're a part of a team. Yeah, you got Everybody roll. plays a role in yeah. this cog in this machine. And sometimes you're you're a table setting playmaker. Sometimes you could be a six man. Yeah. Sometimes you might be the guy that they. Uh, you're you're doing practice. You're a practice player, and you got to emulate the offense for the other team, and that's right. your role. You right. know what I mean? And like, um, I think that's one of the, like the biggest like um, metaphors in life is like when you know when you're a part of a team, you play your role, you play it well, you, you wear a smile on your face, mm-hmm. and you you go out there and tr- you know you give everything you got, and sometimes you win a championship. Sometimes you win a championship, man. You know what I mean? As sometimes. long as long, and at the end of the day. It's the friends you made along the way. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then they help you get and they help you get into they put you in position in these other things, exactly. you know? Yeah. So that's a that's always a blessing. Yeah. Um several years ago, you dropped uh an album. Uh I'm gonna say it's the your first album, and I'll tell you why. Mm. Uh The Coolest is Dead. And oh. <laughs> and I I'm, I'm I'm assuming you did it because you had a name change, OG yes. Moose. Yes. And cause you used to go by Moose the Coolest. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I was actually a part of that album. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, uh, that was like an amazing joint. Um, it was a compilation of uh, ten years of music I made and under my old moniker, Moose right. the Coolest. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, a couple years after that, or like a year later, you did Universe. Yes, which uh, you know under OG Moose now. Yeah, and uh, that was dope. I really loved that one because it was bouncy, uh, c- celebratory type vibes. Thank you, brother. Soulful. Yeah. Uh, I love the features that you had on them. Um, you're really consistent with the people you work with too, the, I think, and yeah, I love yeah. how you take them out of their element to kind of like blend with you. For sure. Um, and then your most recent one uh, in 2021, nothing. It was like yes. the pandemic album. Yeah. So it you was. Could hear a lot of like, um, it was very. You're very vulnerable in that album. For sure. Um, you talk a lot about uh, just the struggles, how you know your mentality at the time, yeah. stuff that a lot of people probably won't talk about. A lot of existential you know, stuff, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but it was still, yeah. you're still doing yeah. it though, like, yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. in your way. You know what I mean? For sure. And uh, and guys, I got to tell you, man, this dude's music is so dope, man. It's um, it's like a, it's like selection. That's what it reminds me of. It's like selection. It's vibey. It's soulful. It's got the bounce. It's upbeat. You could like, you you could do all the layers in this album as different as each song could be. It gets it sounds the same, right? It sounds collective. Um, Thank you, brother. So you're welcome, man. Um, I just want to know, and I know you said earlier, you don't know if you are or not, but are we going to get something else out of you? Because I'm curious to see what the sober OG Moose could create. The one that's traveled the world, what he could talk about nowadays. The one who's created more connects, who's a little more seasoned, who's a little more 
discipline, who's got more age in the game. Right, a little more season. Are we yeah. gonna get are we gonna get one? You know, I had an album done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do this, this year, yeah. And I was planning on dropping in the summertime, right? Then I got real self conscious and I went through some shit and right. like got okay. real existential, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I put this, put it on the shelf. But um, I have a lot of album, I have a lot of music done. I have a lot of music in the tuck, and uh, you know, we'll see, man. Like we'll see, because twenty twenty four. What I'm excited about twenty twenty four is that. Um, I don't even know the direction I'm going. I don't think anyone does. And it's yeah. better when you don't. <laughs> it's better when you don't. It's better when you don't. You know, uh, all plans fall apart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, it's you know, what is it? Like what they say, like only fools uh, think they can plan their thing. You know, yeah, God laughs at you. It. God yeah. laughs at anybody who thinks they got a plan ac- yeah. you know, going accordingly. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway, yeah. I think, um, I think I have a lot of music that needs to be heard. And yeah. uh, whether it's an album or whether it's in singles form, I think uh, I think it's time to 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 put them out. Because the I mean? edits and remixes you've been doing, bro, it's like, fuck, I love that shit. It's just so yeah. nostalgic, bro. Like I keep saying it, but I love listening to your songs, bro. It's like you, it just feels good. Like you know what I mean? You know, um, a it's lot different, of, man. I love it. A lot of being a musician is. Uh, Putting your experiences and your vulnerabilities out there for the world, yeah. And um, so much of you, you, you know, you put so much into to every release, yeah. You know, the rollout is a lot. Of, you know, the marketing aspect, the business aspect of every release is tough. You know, and it's taxing sometimes. You know what I mean? And I think uh, with the last album, nothing. You know, please check it out on all streaming platforms. N u t h i n o g moose on all uh, streaming platforms. Sir, yes, sir. Um, but um, I'm gonna tag it in, in the description yes, too. Yes, sir. Uh, and like you know, with that release, I remember it because it was such a tough time when I released it. It was during the pandemic. Uh, I was um, a little, uh, I was a little burnt out from that rollout. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, and I remember just taking a step back, and um, you know, I was already DJing. That was like something that I was already doing. And then I became full time as a DJ in 2022. Like, yeah. I got laid off from my job January 3rd, 2022. And like, there was this agent that I'd already been working with. And I hit her up. I was like, I just got dropped from my my gig at the dispensary. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I just, you know, I think um, I think I want to do this full time. Yeah. And was able to line some things up for me. And I became, I, I dove. They like you know, face like head first into the DJ, DJ yeah. and um, so because these are like two different brains, you know, it's hard to like have that, you know, that artist mentality and that DJ mentality and being able to put one hundred ten percent into, each, into one, yeah. each one. You know, I think I think I thought I was able to balance it, but you know, it's definitely like I said, it's two different brains. So yeah, with that being said, you know, I think there is a way for me to. Figure out, you know, how to be able to be an artist and be a producer, a full, you know, and and right. and be a full time DJ as well. You know what I mean? I think you could do it, bro. And I think twenty twenty four is gonna be an exciting time. You know what I mean? Let's I'm let's ready, just keep, let's dog. keep it open. Let's keep it open because well, I, I have a lot of music. You know what I mean? I, have I know you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you do get into the creative artistic side, let me know, bro. I'm down to hop on something. Oh, pfft. I think the world needs Marion Wright back. <laughs> <laughs> he might be in a different form. He might be in a different Almighty form. Almighty Merge? Hey, man. You know what I'm saying? It might be in a different form. Yeah, no, nah, but for real, like, yeah. honestly, like, yeah, 2024, um, I'm excited because just in general, like, um, it's, it's like, from all the lessons learned from this year, from the past, like, us as a society getting back into the world. Yeah. Right? And, like, all the, all the, social injustices and civil injustices that we've all experienced and we're more privy to now more than ever. Yeah. I think now more than ever, everyone is really like eyes open, mm-hmm. you know, not going to get political or anything. You know what I mean? You're more, you, you have yeah. every injustice visible to you. Yeah. If you just it, scroll. You be hands on now. Yeah. And, and, and just with that knowledge, just with that, just with that, knowing all that, how do you maneuver in the world today? Knowing right. That there are people in higher positions that are oppressing you on purpose. You right. know what I mean? Right. And like, I think that type of conscious decision should be involved in any creative aspect yeah. or in any any decision anyone makes. You know what yeah. I mean? So 
with that being said, like, I think it's an exciting time to be an artist. Um, you know, it's more challenging, obviously, with a more saturated per market and like, you know, but the technology and the 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 advances and the ingenuities and all these things that's available for every artist. Right. That's what I'm excited for. You know what I mean? Because like the last year has been transform on transition. Like, you know what I mean? It's been such a transitional time. And like the music I created, you know, I'm excited to hone those in and, you know, maybe release them soon. You know what I mean? Hey, man, you already yeah. know. I'm down to, I'm down to listen. Yes. We, yeah, to we, listen. you know, we're we, we going to keep it going, bro. We're going to keep it going, man. It, it's, this, is, this is forever. You know what yeah. I mean? That's no, Knowing that, that's forever. Yeah. Like, this is in our blood. You know what yeah. I mean? Facts, like, man. You mean no your whole no, life. No matter how much time is in between, like, it doesn't matter who's not listening or who is. Yeah. At the end of the day, this is for us. Yeah. Like, we create this music. Yeah. You know, it's our, it's our journals. It's our diaries. You know what I mean? We... We we put it out there just so we can get get it out of our brain. It's it's like it's like this thing in our brain, in our hearts, in our souls that like that burn a hole there, mm -hmm. and like you just need to get it out of there. Yeah. And that's what our music and our art forms are. So yeah, yeah twenty twenty four. Look out for some new new music. Let's get it, man. Yeah, I want to move to this new segment. Well, actually, it's not a new segment. Uh, it's gonna be a little newer because we normally drink on this one, but we're drinking water. <laughs> yeah, we're drinking water, but we're gonna go choose one or shoot one. All right. Um, I don't know if you've seen Drink Chance, but it's just like Quick Time with Slime. I get you two people or things. And... It's not as fun, you know, being sober, but you know, we'll we'll, we'll nah, try we'll to make it fun. We'll still make it fun. We still make it fun, man. You know, um, clear minded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know I mean? All I'll right. be precise with my answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, first one, man. Allen Iverson or Steph Curry? See, look, I so I was I just watched the the Jay Spence episode, and like I'm prepared for these. I'm gonna have like you know what I mean, like little disclaimers with each answer. So yeah, so Steph Curry, in my opinion, mm -hmm. in my opinion is like top ten all time. Okay, as a player. Because his achievements, his resume stands up. Yeah. I think, you know, with that, I think he's finally hit the top 10 mark. I still haven't done the numbers of, like, who got kicked out of the top 10, but right. he's in there. As a player, top 10. As, as, as a player, player. yeah, gotcha. yeah. I will say, though, I'm picking AI, not only because that's your man's. But that's he was also my man's, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Man. Like AI was, like, was our goat. Low he key, he man. was he was a culture like for our generation, yeah. he was like he changed the game. He was the culture, bro. Like he brought culture into this sport and connected us to this sport more than ever. Right. We already liked basketball. Right. And then this dude, 165 wet, yeah, five eleven. Yeah, came <laughs> in the game dropping fifty-six like right. it was nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean, and like had tats, had braids, had had like the baggiest clothes. You, you know, everyone dressed like AI. Yeah, you know what I mean. True. People were wearing sleeves in in middle school, high school. Yeah. Like you didn't even need to warm your your arm up, bro. You young. You know what I mean. Man, you know, you know what used to make me so mad, bro, was mm. um because the NBA was so baggy back then, and they already made big ass clothes. Right. It was so hard for me to fit into like. <laughs> Like basketball pants and like yeah. all this shit. Yeah, tie them up twice. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I'm like, dude, I can't. Even, it just don't even look right on me. I remember yeah. um, just my warm ups in high school were so fucking big, bro. I had to like roll up my sleeves thirty times. Losing the state championship, wearing forex. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man. I'm like, damn, dude. Uh, yeah, man. Nah, yeah, but yeah, my answer is AI, just because like from a culture standpoint, like he we connected to him on like a spiritual level, yeah. bro. He was really that dude. Like, yeah. yeah. I, and yeah, he was one of my favorite players. Hell yeah. Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan? <sighs> All right, another disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael, personally, I believe he's the GOAT. Yeah. Personally. Okay. Right? Because of his impact on the world scale. Mm -hmm. Like, AI looked up to Michael. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that was his idol. So, like, just knowing everything Mike's accomplished on every level. I grew up... My first basketball game I saw was in 96, 97, I believe. It might have been actually the finals, him versus Gary Payton. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, So Michael's obviously like a big part of every Hooper's, every, you know, Hooper's like journey to loving this sport. Michael's that guy. Yeah. I was connected with Kobe on a, he was like a, a anti-hero. Yeah. He was like a villain anti-hero that was, he was always a big 
part of my life because I lived there everywhere I lived, the Lakers were the local channel, like yeah. Fox Sports West, you know? And like I just remember turning the game on, number eight, you know what I mean? Like I I personally had a vendetta against the Lakers early on. You me know too, what I mean? I was me like, too. yeah, I'm beefing with this guy. Yeah. But there was something about this dude. Like just he was mesmerizing to watch because he was emulating everything about Mike. And then um Yeah, it's like we got an extension of uh, Mike's career through him. A through him, bit, yeah. Know? He was like his like spirit animal. And like um there was just something mesmerizing about Kobe. And like from that point on, especially when he, you know, everything he went through, how he he was able to bounce back, basically had a resurgence of his career when he shaved his head. Mm-hmm. Started shooting automatic from 19 feet turnaround jumpers. Yeah. And like uh, just being the best defender guarding the, the 1A on every team. Mm-hmm. Like when he became that dude, I just like, okay. Yeah, he didn't take I no hate breaks. the Lakers, but I love Kobe. Yeah. And um, same. That's where I'm at now with it. Cause, That's where I'm at now. Because like it. I'm a Nets fan. Like I grew up as a Jason Kidd fan. Yeah. Like, he, you know, when he got traded to the Nets, I became locked in with the Nets. They played us in the finals and murdered us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was an even I remember, a challenge. Yeah, not right. a challenge at all. I was in. <laughs> I remember in fifth grade. I think I, I think I broke the remote game three because you I did was, the same. <laughs> the fucking AI after that one game, that gentleman sweep, man. It was over yeah, after gentleman that. Sweep, yeah, you thought you thought he had a chance. He used to yeah. step over over Ty Lue, but yeah, but it was Kobe. It was Kobe. He woke man. up. Yeah. I mean, of course, Shaq is gonna be Shaq. Yeah, Shaq was gonna drop forty five and fifteen like it was nothing because yeah. he's Shaq. But then there was this dude that was like. Just he kept getting better. Yeah. He kept adding to his game. By like 2006, 2007, like that Kobe was just like, like if you were going to create the perfect player, he was that dude. Yeah. And he did it by himself after when Shaq left. Mm. He did it by himself and continued to win championships. Exactly. And so there was always something mesmerizing about him. And like I said, like there was a, there was a thing, a love hate with the Lakers because of how much they were like kind of like this. I don't say villains, but they always but, won. They were always they, winning. Yeah, Showtime like, Lakers yeah, always getting away I'm not with no shit, front runner. Yeah. I'm not gonna hop on no bandwagon, you know, man. But yeah. but at the end of the day, it was Kobe. And he it was this was my four horsemen of favorite players growing up. Yeah. It was AI, Kobe, Jason Kidd, and LeBron. Got you. Those when I grew up, those were the guys that were my players. So yeah, for this answer, Mike is the goat. I will go with Kobe. Got it, man. You know, with Kobe. Got you, got you. Right. Yeah, you had to say these, yeah. these disclaimers are about to be long as hell. I, I was listening to nah, that episode. you good, man. You good. Uh, speaking of Shaq, we, we'll go with Shaq or Hakeem Olajuwon. It's like, it's like brute force versus finesse. You know what? Shaq is amazing. I love him on inside of the NBA. He's, you know. Great guy. He's funny. He's funny. Musician. I ran into him a few times too. I played like a couple corporate events. He was tall as hell. I was yeah. like, I was like to his hip, bro. Like, I, I mean, I'm already short, but like, my man is a huge yeah. human being. So he's a great person, you know, and and also he's one of the most dominant athletes of all time. Like, yeah. his impact on whatever on the sport is so dominant. But I will say, I think I'm gonna go Akeem because I just admired Akeem on a on a skill finesse level that yeah. you know dream. Like, yeah, the dream, man. Like that dude was like the, the way he schooled Shaq in the ninety five finals or ninety four finals or whatever it was. It's right. ninety five finals, yeah. The sweep, I mean, that just goes to show you like where he was at with his career. You know, right. it was young Shaq versus a seasoned vet. And um, yeah, like at that time I was just like, Oh yeah, Akeem is probably the one of the best centers of all time. And you know, he's my super, favorite center of he's, all time. He's 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 in a very loaded list, like sh- the, that's the glamour position of the NBA. The way the yeah. quarterback is in the NFL, the center position is like where all the titans are. You yeah. know what I mean? The Kareem's, Bill Russell, yeah, the Will, Will yeah. and then you know, of course, Shaq in the '90s and 2000s. But Akeem, yeah, he was that dude that was just like, bro. If if every young athlete, every young big man needs to learn how to play as a as a big man, you know, even with this modernized like perimeter big man game. Yeah. Please study a king. Yeah. He is that dude. He's that dude, man. LeBron or Magic? I should already know the answer to this. I don't know why I asked. <laughs> Another <one>. disclaimer. Here <laughs> we go. So Magic, <laughs> one of the greatest players of all time, he basically 
saved the NBA. Him and Larry saved the NBA. Yeah. You know, like like unbeknownst to a lot of people, like them coming out of college, the seventies, the seventies NBA was a struggle. They were like showing the finals on on late replay. Mm. It wasn't even live. Right. Bro. Right. Like like the NBA didn't have a strong fan base. Right. Like, you know, it was competing against baseball, and NFL was like this fledgling uh, sport. And then the NBA came around to the eighties. Saved by these two players who were intertwined from college. They played yeah. the finals together in, in, in college. And then they had this budding rivalry that they ended up going to magically, going yeah, into the, the two glamour yeah. franchises. LA and Boston. LA yeah. and Boston. <laughs> and like, you know, so, so with that being said, Magic, you know, he's one of the best. I, I personally, for the longest, I thought he was two in the yeah. top 10 list. Yeah. Braun just surpassed him. Okay. So you got, you got Braun at the one. Uh, number two. Number two. Yeah, oh, yeah. Bron, and, my, two, and Mike, gotcha. Mike is one. Yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So with this, with that being said, I think Bron, uh, what he's been able to accomplish at year twenty one is crazy. Yeah. But you know, like I said, I grew up watching Bron. Like I literally saw his first game against Carmelo on ESPN two. Yeah, I remember that. You know what I mean? Oak yeah. Hill versus I, Saint Vincent. Saint I Mary. recorded it because I had we had practice. Mm. I recorded it on my VHS player. You know, because you could yep. run it through the, the TV, yep. and then I watched it after. Man, that shit was crazy. That was fun to watch. And and so having followed this guy's career throughout all that, like, there's no, I don't see how people can discredit this man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, he's been able to do it with no, like, he never got in trouble. You know, yeah. his the biggest smear on his career is the 2011 season yeah. against <laughs> Dallas. Yeah, that's it. Right? Like, his biggest, the biggest smear yeah. of his career is he went to the finals and lost. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, of course, you know he's going through his struggles, and there's very p- polarizing opinions about this dude. But it's undeniable, in my opinion. Yeah, LeBron's LeBron. You got LeBron's LeBron that dude, that. man. Yeah. Um, sidetrack. Uh, that that same year, Carmelo and LeBron were on ESPN too. Yeah. Uh, Cheyenne almost beat Oak Hill. Whoa. Yeah. Word. Cheyenne was one of the top teams. I, who, I don't who, know if who, they were top twenty five in the who nation. Who was playing with Cheyenne at that in that time? Two thousand two, right? Yeah, yeah. If I can't remember, I can't remember names that well. I know this dude named Lorenzo was playing on the <laughs> team, and my boy Peach was playing on the team too. Okay, I, they're all they're all coaches now. They're all like wow. uh, club coaches in the city. The, so, so were they in the national circuit too at that time? I like, want to say they were. I want to uh, say they were, or they were like a team that needed to be in it because they were okay. destroying teams. That's awesome. They actually were beating Oak Hill. That's crazy. Until the last quarter. And I think from what I remember Peach telling me was Melo turned it the fuck on. <laughs> yeah, and then it was over after that. That man's cold. So, that man's cold. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to do one more NBA because I know we could talk about this all oh, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still want to get into some yeah, yeah, current yeah. NBA shit. But sure. Kyrie or Dame? No, I'm a Nets fan. I know. And you know, I know. That man has hurt my feelings many times <laughs> over the four years he played there. Yeah. Um Kai's undeniable, man. He's a, he's on he's one of I think to me he's like the best skill player ever. Like like if you can put aside everything <laughs> controversial thing he's yeah, been a part just of. Basketball player. If you yeah. could just go basketball on the court, like He's like, he's like the, the you know, just art. He's yeah. an artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like the disclaimer, obviously, Dame, one of the most skilled players we've had. He's probably the second best shooter in the league right. of his generation. Right. He might be, you know, a little ahead of, especially, ahead especially of Clay, in you clutch know? time. And yeah. cl- especially in clutch especially time. In clutch and time. It's awesome dude. He seems like a real one. You know yeah. what I mean? And he got bars. Real stand up guy. And he got bars. <laughs> but. If we just kept it strictly hoops, and I wish he never got injured. I wish Giannis never put his foot under uh, Kyrie in the twenty twenty one semifinals. Yeah, um, I think Kai is one of the most skilled players we've ever seen. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with this. You going yeah. with Kai? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. All right, we're gonna do some boxing. <laughs> These fighters have Ooh, never fought. Okay, we talking boxing? These fighters have never fought. Some people, some people don't know shit about boxing. Yeah, I, <laughs> man. Nowadays, it's hard. I, I'm Rest trying peace, to Roger get. Mayweather. Yeah, I'm trying to get into it again. Uh, but I used to be big, 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 big. Right, have you been it. following the last couple years? 
Not not as much as I want to every single year. I tell myself, like, you know, yeah. I've, I've been trying to watch more, okay. but it's just hard for me to keep up. Have you seen, like, the pay-per-views, like, the main events this year? Um, like Some the, of them. Some, like the most of them Bud, I've just been catching Bud them. I, yeah, I've seen that one, yeah. you know. Um, Canelo Charlie, you saw that Yeah, one? yeah, yeah I've seen yeah. that one. But most of them I catch them later. Like, it's hard for yeah. me to sit down and watch them live nowadays. For sure, for yeah. sure. Especially on Especially because they got the UFC, too. And then, like, right. every time people want to watch, they... They want, rather go watch UFC. We got to talk about that first. Just, I know we're going to get super yeah. sidetracked, but like, what is it with boxing promoters and UFC trying to compete on the same night? They need to just what like, is that? they should switch it up. Like, schedule them. Like, yeah, yeah, just switch them up a little bit, like, man. People are willing to pay for whatever pay per view, or they might stream it illegally. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like, they're willing to, they're willing to catch it on different nights. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I, don't, I don't mind that. Like, I don't understand like them competing like big head. Like, there was a fight. I remember Canelo had a fight. And then they had to, com- they had to wait. It's just this be- recent one with because a UFC fight happened. Yeah, and like Canelo had was in the dressing room waiting for the UFC fight to yeah. end, for people to like get over to the pay per view. I'm just like, what is that? Anyway, anyway. Yeah, it's just it's bullshit. But yeah, here we yeah. go. Tank Davis or Terrence Crawford? Oh, Tank or easy. Bud? Bud is one of my favorite bo- favorite boxers of all time. Yeah, I've been rocking with Dude since the mid 2010s. Okay, I first saw him on Top Rank ESPN. Just some random dude from Omaha. He was like some random fight. And like, I was mesmerized by him as a closer. Yeah. Like, he knew, he knew like, all right, seventh round. I got to close this motherfucker. Yeah, and it's over. He's starting, <laughs> yeah, and it's over. Immediately, yeah, it's the over. moment he yeah. decides to do it, he's a switch hitter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like- he he's he's like he's strong, he's fighting as a you know as a as a orth, orthodox fighter switches to Southpaw. by round yeah. to southpaw so basically his jab is his strong hand yeah you know what I mean like that man and is a crazy. beast that man is a beast and like that Spence fight I mean it's undeniable you know yeah that that shit was crazy I, not to I, take I away from Tank though like that. not to wait from Tank though yeah. I mean for him for him in in the one thirty five uh, division. I need to see him fight better fighters. Though. They'd have to meet at a, a catch weight. I don't know what it. It's would never be. gonna happen. Yeah, it's never gonna happen because Bud is gonna move up. Yeah, you know, tanks. They have like a big disparity, but yeah. between the two, for sure, just on some boxing. They, I rock with Bud. Like, yeah. I, I fuck with Bud. Yeah, no, long he's way, man. Yeah. Pause. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, Mike Tyson or George Foreman? Mike. Easy. Yeah, because George Foreman. I mean, I, I was I wasn't young enough. I wasn't old enough to right. see his fights. My f- only familiarity with George was his, his grill. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> <laughs> He's a strong motherfucker. Though. Strong motherfucker. Like yeah. I, I I remember I did a a, um, a book report on Muhammad Ali, so I had mm-hmm. to learn a little bit about his opponent. So I learned a little bit about George Foreman. I know yeah. he's. A, I was like, well, Mike, come on, man. Yeah. Come on, Mike. Mike's. Mike, that that would be a crazy ass fight to see, though. It will be a crazy fight because it's like two. Tanks. Two, two, one's uh, really big, and the other one is two like, hunters. You know what yeah, I mean? Basically, yeah, yeah. like yeah, they're k- looking for KOs. And I can't imagine how that would have ended. But I'm sure Mike probably would have won. You know yeah, what I mean? my, my although he was like, they have a huge size disparity because like George yeah, is a pretty huge. big dude, right? Yeah, he's yeah, a big yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and he's strong. So it's like, but they're both strong. Yeah, I think Mike's a lot faster. He's than a lot George agile, more agile. Yeah. yeah, like it's hard to come. That's one of the things about boxing. It's one of the hardest to compare generations because yeah. of how much the boxing. Like athleticism changes, it just changes throughout, yeah, yeah, throughout the time. But yeah, like Mike was ahead of his time in the eighties, man. Prime, yeah. prime Mike. Oh yeah. Shh. How well, many rounds? That that, that fight, Foreman, Foreman. How, how, how many rounds? How, I would say it would be a, th- a three rounder. Mike, Mike in three. Might have been, might have been uh, eight. <laughs> Mike <laughs> you know, and eight. But honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Mike, yeah, he would have been, he would have closed that. If it yeah. was, it was, if it once was Mike 85, gets a night, once Mike gets a knockdown, yeah, it's pr- like one more round. Pr- prime George Foreman versus like prime 1980s Mike. Yeah. I think Mike would have locked that in. Yeah. All right. Uh, Floyd Mayweather or Sugar Ray Leonard? Ooh. Yeah. And this one could. You could really make this shit happen if they were both in the same yeah like uh, Cause, cause, time frame. Because Sugar Ray Leonard, Leonard was was, was 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 ahead of his time. Yeah, with his skill set too. And he was fast as fuck. I will say, you know what? You know, I had a pretty big vendetta against Floyd because I'm Filipino. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I admire Sugar Ray. He was a great like that welterweight division was probably one of the most legendary. Yeah. Like like. He was knocking out legends, man. Yeah, like his resume is pretty sick. And then, but think about it: like 
Hagler, Hearns. You know what I'm saying? Him. Who who was the uh, Hispanic fighter that he fought? That, was uh, it um that that Sugar Ray fought? Was that, it Roberto Duran? Yeah, Durant, yeah, Roberto Duran. Like just them four was like that. And Duran was crazy in, in one division. Yeah, in one division in one era, they were all competing against each other. No one was like protecting their O's. No one was nah, protecting. They their, were fucking fighting. They were all yeah. fighting each other and like you know what I mean. Like and I I respected that era yeah. of boxing, but I will say about Floyd, Pretty Boy Floyd. Mm-hmm. Before money, yeah, pretty boy Floyd was a beast. Before yeah. he like, I guess he broke his hands or something like that. Pretty boy Floyd was a beast. One yeah. of my first introductions into boxing was him, and like you know, just that that uh, super well uh, light welterweight, one forty to one forty seven. That era of division of the, those divisions, like, was my introduction into yeah. boxing. Yeah, Floyd was a beast, bro. Yeah, 135, 140, 147. 135, 140 Floyd was a, was a different animal, man. I seen him uh, like the 05 when he fought uh, Ar- was it 05, yeah, I think. Gotti? Arturo Gotti. Jesus. That's when I was like, whoa. This guy's crazy because yeah. he, he at that time he was still a finisher. He was still, you yeah, know, had still had active, a lot of power man. before yeah. he broke his hands. And then later on in his career, he knew he needed to become more of a, a, defen- a, a defensive defender, yeah. guy, and you know, yeah. So I think I think I would have picked Floyd. Yeah. I feel that. All right, here we go. Uh, we're gonna move into some music. All right. Okay. All right. Jay Z or Nas? <sighs> Disclaimer again. <laughs> Nasir Jones, one yeah. of the the greatest okay. musicians of our time. Yeah. He's been a big part of my life. Every generation of Nas, mm-hmm. I, and it's crazy, he's still active. Yeah, still active. You know, him and Hit Boy have done amazing music over the last like three years, which is four years. It's been crazy yeah. the run that they went on. He's like LeBron, bro, like year 21, aging like fine wine. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and like, yeah, without that said, like Nas, like, is a big part of my life. I've listened to him throughout my life. You know, he's been a big part of every era of my hip hop fandom, you know? Mm-hmm. But Hove to me is like Michael Jordan. Yeah. You know, like it's undeniable his resume. Yeah. And um, at every point, every album release he had, to me, like it feels like, you know, Michael's championships. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when Michael won a championship, it, it was just undeniable. And I feel like with, with Jay, like every single album that I love of his changed my life. Yeah. You know, of course, I was still young and with Reasonable Doubt and in my lifetime and all those records came out. But Blueprint, when it, I remember when it came out. Like, you know what I mean? It was the day, uh, September, on September 11th. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. 2001. <laughs> like, we were, we were going to go get it, <laughs> but it was, a, it was a long day. You know what I mean? So, again, Circus City was my spot to go to. I remember getting it that week, uh, the Blueprint. And I remember, <laughs> I didn't know this at the time. Uh, we ended up, no, we didn't. We didn't ended up getting it at Circuit City. Went to going getting it at Walmart, mm-hmm. and at the time I didn't notice that. I guess at Walmart they sold like clean versions. Yeah, they, they don't sell the dirty version. Yeah, yet. and for the for like as long as I was listening to it when I was at that time, I was just listening to clean version. I didn't know <laughs> I was hell, listening dude. to the. I, I didn't know about the dirty version until dude, I got older. I was like, oh funny. shit! I was listening to because that shit is explicit. It's very explicit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just thought it was just you know I thought I just I just thought this was yeah. uh, you know but then you, you listen to Breathe Easy I was like oh shit I didn't yeah. know he was saying these it's like, it's an yeah. alchemist joint anyway anyway shout out to um shout out to Hove I think I would pick him yeah. you know for sure I, yeah. I remember uh, every time his album comes out it's not even like uh you know it's going platinum the question was yeah, yeah, yeah. when is it gonna go platinum right first day second day or you know first week second week this is crazy. I, I think man. that's the thing about Hove compared to Nas was Nas was such a, you know, he was a writer, he was cerebral, yeah, and you know he was a storyteller, and then Hove is kind of like, you get everything in his album, yeah, you get all of that. He'll you'll get some 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 street talk, some money talk, you know, and then he can also get on his um you know his other bags, but like to me he was like a very di- he had a very diverse uh like game, yeah. you know what I mean? It's kind of like like I said like. You just to be able to do what he did. Every album changed. Like I went to the Book of Hove when I was out. In, yeah, the, I seen this, that. That's dope. I went to the Book of Hove yeah. uh, Museum, and, and it just blew my mind that, like, you know, obviously, 
in this, you know, it was at the Brooklyn Public Library, I believe is yeah. what it's called. And like, uh, it, just to be able to have a hip hop artist have their life showcased in like a like a as a, as like a as a museum and like, yeah. as, like it it was blowing my mind like like literally like when I was in New York you know this year's the fiftieth year of hip hop mm -hmm. and it just kept blowing my mind I'm like bro like that that Biggie line I never thought hip hop would take it this yeah, far man, bro that's like crazy. I was in this public library but they were showing it as like a like you know as like art pieces I'm just like bro like this is how far hip hop has gone we in the library public library with all of hip, with Jay's life. Like the artifacts, man. as the artifacts, artifacts, bro. Yeah. Like I'm just like, damn, this is a trip. So yeah, yeah, I'll I'll pick Hove. <laughs> Shout out to Nas though. Shout out to Nas. Tupac or DMX. I think, I think I'll go Tupac. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was a time where DMX was the biggest. Rapper in the world. Yeah, man. In one year, Jay Z was torn for him. For <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like DMX was the biggest rapper in the world. Had two platinum albums in one year. Yeah, crazy run, you know, and became a a movie star. You know what I mean? Had a had a pretty big run, but I think with me, uh, I think I was just really connected to. To, Pac. to to Pac's album. Yeah, me too. I was way uh, more connected to Pac. Yeah, like um I grew up with Me Against the World. Yeah. Like that album was like a soundtrack to my upbringing, you know what I mean? And um uh, yeah, I For a lot of people, I think, man. Yeah, you know? and uh I you know, he's obviously a generational person and like I feel like uh between them two, I would I would pick Pac. Pac, got you. Yeah. Big L or Biggie Smalls? <sighs> L is like so skilled and was just taken too early. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, real early, man. I, like, both, both of them, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one exactly, album each. Exactly. Yeah. Couple albums each, I think. Right? They both hit two. I thought. I thought only had one. Or Big L had like a posthumous album, I, didn't he? I felt like he possibly was because he died at right before he was signing with Rock Rockefeller, yeah. right? Yeah. I think he had a second album out, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not I sure. have to redo all yeah, this shit. Yeah, but, yeah. We'll check but, it. but yeah, like yeah. you know, they both had. Couple albums in their bag, and like just with that, I think I, I personally loved Biggie's music, yeah, so much because he crossed over, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there was no denying from my young age, I wasn't not gonna hear Biggie's music, like, I heard his music, yeah. I was out, so I was more connected to him. Like, Big L was one of those artists that I learned about as you know. When he had already passed, and I was already like in elementary school when I learned about him. Yeah, I keep, was, I keep forgetting you're you're a little yeah, younger. Yeah. yeah, so like, so yeah, with that, yeah, I was, I think Biggie, you know. Yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, he was in elementary school too when he passed, or I was in elementary school when he passed too. Really? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Biggie was so mainstream already. Yeah. I didn't learn about Big L till later on. I got older, but Big L, like lyricism, was just. Skill wise, one of the most talented yeah, and, to, to talk artists of his shit, time. Yeah. yeah, in that format is crazy. Just like man. Tri triple, uh, triple syllable shit. You yeah, know what I mean? Crazy. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Wu Tang or NWA? I'm go tribe. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think uh, I think I'll go Wu Tang. Yeah. I feel like I've listened to more Wu Tang and more of their individual albums more. Mm. Um, than I did the NWA because they were their their run was a lot earlier yeah. for me. Like I was way too young, <laughs> like I wasn't even born yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? When when they dropped, so it's like when that, when their music I, it didn't resonate to me. I heard it in like movies, I heard it in commercials, I heard it in like passing. Yeah. And then Cube was already his own person. Dre was his already his own person. Yeah, they were already and like... yeah, by the time I, you know, like NWA was more of just like, you know, it's a historical moment in time. Yeah. The way Wu Tang was just like this like fucking killing shit. They were just yeah. like a, you know, they were like the Lakers, bro. Like they was just a di dynasty. Yeah, because you know like I mean? the late, like like mid nineties, late nineties when they really were like mm -hmm. picking up uh steam. I think that first album was ninety three, right? Yeah. Ninety two, ninety three. And yeah. like which was a historical day in music, like you know that day was like, was it them? Tribe drop, Outkast in ninety three. It was a lot, like a yeah, lot in of the, the same year. Legends yeah, in Biggie dropped in that year. Yeah. Anyway, but um, yeah. So 
I think Wu Tang just because, like, yeah, like I said, all the individual albums that everyone dropped, the Purple Tape, like yeah. Method Man, like, you know what I mean? Like, Ghost, like, they all dropped crazy albums, you know what I'm saying? Liquid Swords, like, yeah. all those albums came out, and, like, you had all this music, diverse music, too, to experience, and, like, I think I'll pick Wu. Got you. you. Know? Got you. Uh, Travis Scott or Tyler the Creator? Oh, that's easy for me. Yeah. Tyler. Yeah, he's very he's a, that dude is a that dude a is music, a beast. A musician. That's who's a beast. You know how they do like um the Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick comparisons, how like they're yeah. like the top of hip hop. I think it's unfair that we don't put Tyler up there. Yeah. Just because one He's at around the same time, yeah. He was yeah, the roughly same time, around yeah. the same time. And he was way younger than them yeah. at that time too. Um but um he's like around my age, roughly. Yeah. And like so Tyler, like so we share this a lot of the same sensibilities. We're both Children of Pharrell, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Oh, like, man, yeah, he's a huge fan of Pharrell. <laughs> me yeah, too. Yeah, and like you know, so a lot of the same like taste level. So I, I I relate a lot to him now. You know, obviously when I first heard him, it was kind of more like this, like oh, it's like this niche guy. Like it was. I remember it being on Tumblr and and, and YouTube. Like it was yeah. like, who is this guy? Him and Earl was like, who are these guys? You know what I mean? Like the odd, whole odd future thing. But the more you stuck on his music, evolved so much. And he kept getting better every single yeah. year. So, you know, like every album is like uh it's like a it's so different, man. Yeah. Like compared to like his era of music when he's coming out. Like it's so different. The musicianship is so yeah. strong. He's one of those producer rappers who yeah. like, you know, he was able to create his own productions, bring in musicians, and he was able to evolve his music. And in his last joint. He was barring motherfuckers up. Yeah. He was rapping harder than like straight up rappers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like he was rapping his ass off in the last album. Yeah, that's a double entendre you said. Rapping <laughs> harder than straight ass rappers. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, picked Tyler. Tyler. Although I fuck with Travis too, but um, yeah, Tyler, man. Easy. Got you. Lauren Hill or Erica Badu. Oh, I have my answer set ready for this. <laughs> Erica. Yeah. Erica's yeah, like all day, to me, man. Erica's like. One of my favorite artists of all time. Yeah. I saw her at the Craig Ranch Park. Oh, you <laughs> went to that concert, one? A concert, yeah. Re, was it yeah. last year? Yeah, two years ago. Was it raining? Raining. Uh, right? It wasn't raining. No, no, no. Oh, okay. It's a lot of weed, though. Yeah. It was all high. Maybe that's there. what it was. Yeah, it was smoky. And that <laughs> yeah. it was, but no, Erica's one of my favorite artists of all time. Yeah. You know what I mean? From Mama's Gun. Like, that was one of my first... Intro that was my first introduction to her was Mama's Gun. And, like, that album is, like, one of the greatest albums ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's and one like, of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah. Man. And, yeah, like... Top uh, five for me. Easily. And, yeah, between them two, just longevity and body of work. And, you know, we all know about Lauren's... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've, I've, Antics. Yo, I have a story about Lauren. So, I went yeah. to her show at the Brooklyn Bowl. It was, like, Brooklyn yeah. Bowl had just opened. She was in one of the first... In the first uh, few months that they had there, she was a... She was a guest and she headlined and of course she was late. We yeah. know that. She had like an intermission, bro. Mid show? Mid show. So oh, fuck. so she, you know, like without even saying anything, like she stops the show. Like and like everyone thought she was done. Yeah. Dog, when I say 60% of the room left, 60% of the room left. We all were just kind of hanging out by the patio. People were smoking cigs, whatever. We were just vibing. Because, like, I can't believe we just wasted... We waited two hours for this person, and she only performed for, like, 30 minutes. Mm. And all the songs were, like, hella interpolated and sped up and different sounding. Like, you know what I mean? We yeah. didn't, she didn't even play the hits yet. And, like, she came back on 30 minutes later. We were just like, what the fuck? And like we ran over and like, bro, we were in the back because like the room was so packed. You yeah. know how Brooklyn Bowl is? We were in the back. We were all the way in the front because 60% of the room left. Yeah, so you guys moved all the way to the front. And yeah. like, yeah, like the room was half full. They didn't even know that she was coming back. She was coming back. She had taken an intermission after being two hours late. That's crazy. So I need I have, a break. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, you know, you know, that's one of the things that kind of like it, it hurts about Lauren's career because yeah. I really love her music. Like yeah. that album and her work with the Fugees are like really like pivotal stuff in in our culture. Right. But it's just like this last ten years of her <laughs> career has been really like unfortunate. You know what I mean? Nah, I feel you. So, man. but anyway, Timberland or the Neptunes? Ooh, I'm gonna go Neptunes, but. I feel like um, 
Timbo deserves his flowers as one of the most like revolutionary producers yeah. of all time. Like hip hop for sure. Like listening to his, and R and B because uh, his music, because yeah, his music, his his production, and like if you listen to his music from like ninety five, ninety six, like ninety seven, like that shit sounds like what music sounds now. Yeah. He was so ahead of his time. Yeah, like, his joints with Timberland Magoo. His, his, his shit with Missy Aaliyah, and Aaliyah, Missy. like SWV, like yeah. bro, Timbo's music was like I studied him. I studied Timbo more than I probably studied Pharrell and, and Chad. But I will say I was more connected to Chad and 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 uh Pharrell and, Pharrell and you know, just like damn, like those guys, like you know, we all had bait. We all, we was all bumping Hell Hath No Fury. We was yeah. all listening to all their production work, N E R D shit. Like we was all on that. You know, yeah, like all, I said, all I'm, the the uh, the production placements they had with some yeah, of the top artists all, in the world. They, like there was one time where they had like forty percent of the records on the radio or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like all the singles were that like was like produced early two like, thousands. Yeah, I roughly think. around yeah. two thousand, early two thousands. So like it was like you couldn't not listen to yeah. them. And like when I found out Chad was Filipino, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. I'm rocking with them. Yeah, they went. Yeah. He went to the same church we did in Virginia Beach. Oh yeah, you from there? You from yeah, out there? Yeah. Yo, I'm what's in there. the water out there? Why is there so much talent out there, bro? <laughs> that's the name they of the have... fucking. Uh, that's the name of the. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> the yeah. Festival. Oh yeah, it is. Oh huh? yeah. yeah. Nah, there's something in the water out there, bro. Because it's like there's so much talent in Virginia. In Vir- I don't, I don't know. Virginia it's Beach a... specifically, right? Yeah, I yeah. think it. You know what? I think it's. Um, so you have like Teddy Riley, Black yeah. Street, out of Virginia. You yeah. have uh, the. You know, Chad and Frail, the Neptunes, uh, Timberland, you know, Missy. Chris Brown is from out in Virginia. Missy too, right? Missy, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just, the they're eclectic. It's like, it's just, that's just what it is. I, I really don't know. Um, from when you grew up out there, what was like, What was there like a big community of artists or creatives out so there? So I was in elementary school when I was out there, but I was around like, um, I was around Leon Silvers, the third, mm. yeah, the, you know. Yeah, the producer yeah. for yeah, the yeah. Silvers, and yeah, and, yeah. and he was a part of the part of the music group. So uh, I didn't. Besides him and like the music he was creating, like he was working a lot with like Chauncey from Blackstreet mm. and Teddy Riley. Um, I didn't really know much else besides the fact that these dudes were mainstream, like right. Timberland and all that, and that they're from the they're from the area. Yeah, you know. So I remember, but by the time I left is when it really popped off because when sure. I left. In ninety nine, that? that's when like the Neptunes really started popping off. Yeah. The Clips came out with their album. Oh, of course, like, they're a year from later. out there too, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just I don't know. It's there's it's just an eclectic ass place. Like Man. like even my boy uh, Leon's son of the same name, Leon. I don't mean to confuse people. The fourth, the fourth, my boy SB. Shall see you. Uh, he's even his music is really different. You know, yeah. so like it. I don't know. It's just that's crazy. It's it just must a, be so cool to have like, you know, to that one city can produce so much talent. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And then yeah. and be legendary at it. Legendary. It's talent. not even yeah. just like not just like oh, it's, these guys had a couple. Yeah, no, like, like these no, are they're all legends. They're all legends. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I really don't know what that's it is. crazy. All right, man. Um, digital or analog? I mean, you know the cliche like the warmth of analog is. <laughs> Is you can't recreate it, right? But we all create in digital, bro. It's yeah. 2023. Like, we're, <laughs> there is nothing I can do now that's analog, unless, of course, you hook up your thing to a MIDI or you know, you hook it up to you know what I mean. Yeah, nowadays your, you can replicate the sound, you man. Could, you you could, can't even tell yeah, the difference. Yeah, there's a lot of emulators and stuff, but like, yeah, like everything we create. Yeah. I started in digital. I yeah. can't choose analog. I've, I never created on the SP 1200, yeah. bro. You know what I'm it's, saying? It's crazy because I started analog. Did you? Yeah, but. You had to transfer it digitally mm. <laughs> into into Pro Tools. What was your first like? Uh, but the first thing? joint that I made stuff on, uh, and it's not even like complete analog. It's it's a tri- Korg Triton. It's a digital oh, keyboard. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, that's a banger too. It is a banger. It had a lot of good yeah. sounds. Like a lot of the greatest songs ever were have stock Triton sounds. Yeah, I got <laughs> it. I I got the Triton because of Timbo. Yeah, and the Neptunes. Yeah. This is the whole reason the I got fade, that shit. Remember that fade to black? Uh, he was playing yeah, everything. Yeah, I saw that shit and I'm like, 
That's what I want for my graduation gift. Yeah. Yeah. And shout out to my banger. parents. They they hooked it up. Yeah, that's a banger yeah. equipment. Yeah. But it actually it was it's not even analog, but I treat it you had to kind of treat it that way for because sure. like it, you know you uh, could sequence it wasn't on a control. There? You could, right? You can sequence on there yeah. and you can make it a controller too. I just like yeah, MIDI. Yeah, yeah. You could do MIDI on there. Yeah. But, but I really had... liked I didn't really I really like just creating from it. And recording the audio into exactly like a dog exactly so. exactly so yeah like yeah I, I can say analog is so where it's at like because the majority of of recorded history was recorded on the greatest music of all time is yeah, recorded yeah. on analog I could say the cliche like nothing beats analog but I'm a digital musician like <laughs> I, I create on digital yeah, you things say, you can't say analog and that's how you make yeah, your yeah I'll be fake as hell bro <laughs> yeah. like nah I, I'm FL gang bro you yeah. know what I'm saying. Digital, digital. Yeah. All right, last one. Loyalty or respect? Take a shot on that one. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Um, you know what? I think I'll pick loyalty because to be loyal to someone is to love and respect them. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not going to be loyal to someone you don't respect. Yeah. Cool. Sometimes you don't. You, sometimes people aren't loyal to people they respect. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll go with loyalty. Because I think yes. that goes a long way to me, in my opinion. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. All right, man. That's tough, um, bro. We, <laughs> <laughs> he made it through. He ain't take, take no shots. No yeah, shit. No man. alcohol. That's no crazy. alcohol, man. Yeah, I didn't notch in one shot. I want to move to the, to, to the NBA. So Moose had, he hit me up. He said, yo, add this, add this segment in. Yeah, I wanted to pitch you a segment because yeah. I love basketball. Yeah. And so much of bo basketball talk is so toxic and so mm -hmm. like comparative and like so like, you know, negative, especially on, you know, on Twitter or whatever. Right. And I'm just like I feel like I want to talk about basketball in a celebratory sense. Okay. So I wanted to pitch a segment. It's called Closing 5. Okay. And it's the five things I want to celebrate about the first season of this year's NBA. Uh, the first the first month of this right, NBA of this season. season, yeah. Okay, what so, you got for me, man? All right, so the you know number one on uh, on my five things that I'm excited about. Uh, Anthony Edwards is a superstar. I love that dude. I love that dude. I love that dude. On and off the court, I know he had some things <laughs> last year, but look at his stat line, bro. Twenty seven, six and five. Yeah. So seven, six rebounds, five assists on 47, 37, 87 spl shooting splits. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Like he's found a way, and he's so he, this is what year three or four for him. Yeah, he's found a I think way. Third year. Yeah, yeah, third year. Every single year, he added something to his bag. You know, he was more of like an athletic guy. Then he added a mid range. And now he can shoot then long range. Now he's pulling up from three, and you know he's an efficient guy. And he like this FIBA World Cup experience with him. He became. He learned how to be the one A. Yeah. You know, and he became a table setter. He was able to find a way to be a playmaker. My man is a superstar. And Minnesota, as of this recording, was the first seed in the West. Of course, everything changes in the NBA. Yeah. yeah. But and we'll probably look at that in a second yeah, after this. But yeah. like the fact that they're the first seed, Minnesota is the first seed in the NBA right now, is kind of crazy. And it's all because of him. Right. You know what I mean? So Anthony Edwards is a superstar. I I like Anthony Edwards a lot. Uh when he got drafted and I started watching him in his first season. I was glued. I was like, this this dude is my favorite rookie of that class. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say him and Lamelo were drafted in the same yeah, seat one year. Two, one two. Yeah. So uh, I actually hope that those two are the new face of the league. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I really like Lamelo's game. I was yeah. e even though it's different, it was crazy, especially in high school. That shit was wild. Like me and Goose <laughs> drove to Chino Hills to watch him play. Did you? Yeah, to watch him play against my alma mater, Foothill. Oh wow! Yeah, they yeah. played him. Yeah, that's the clip you seen where he points down and shoots at half court oh, as soon as the tip off. That's the meme. Um, yeah, that's crazy. The score was one thirty one to one hundred. They wow. score points. Yeah, but that's like. But anyway, yeah, like Lamelo and Anthony Edwards, like those dudes. I want them to be the, the new face of the league. Yeah. Like you know, when when KD is retired, LeBron is retired. Yeah, I like those dudes a lot. I wish them a lot of success. Too. And I love yeah. watching their game. I like rooting for I like Lamelo. I like yeah. rooting for Ant because he seems like a real stand up dude. Like yeah. he stands on on him and he's funny as hell. Like yeah. I've seen his interview. He's hilarious. So, you know, him as a person, I genuinely fuck with that. And I like that you were talking about Lamelo because 
Number two okay. on my thing is uh, I think this is the new golden era of point guards. LaMelo Ball? So check this out, right? So this is, you know, we just left the 2010s, which I think, in my opinion, is the official golden era of point guards. Okay. Like we've had a lot of legendary point guards throughout history of ball. We've got Magic, Isaiah, you know, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, CP from the 2000s. You know what I mean? We've had a lot of great point guards, but the 2010s is really where it was the peak. We've had, like the list was Kai. Right. Uh, you got Steph, Dame, Steph, Curry. Steph obviously, yeah. you know, and like, uh, you got Rondo, mm-hmm. uh, you know what I mean? Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Der- Derek Rose. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of great point guards from that era. Even Tony Parker was towards the end of his career. So, it was like a legendary run. In my opinion, 2010s is the golden era of point guards. But this, in this era, you have your tiers, right? Yeah. So, we have our established superstars. Like, we know these guys are like superstars. SGA, Shea Gilgis, yeah, Alexander, he's and, fire. Yeah. and Luka Doncic. Yeah. Established star superstars. These guys will lead your team. You know what I mean? Like they're they're both averaging 30 a game this year. Yeah. So it's, it's incredible. Then you got your scoring threat point guards. You got De'Aaron Fox, mm-hmm. Trey Young. I like De'Aaron Fox a lot. I love De'Aaron Fox. Yeah. And and it's crazy because in his career early on, I thought, oh man, this guy's not gonna reach his peak. Like yeah. he's he kind of like he, he kind of peaked a little bit. And then he turned up another notch when DeMontis Sabonis came in. Mm-hmm. He was able to be the, the he had the keys to the franchise. And this year, I think he's averaging 29 yeah, a game. And Ty- Tyrese Halliburton, too. Oh, wait, he hold was on. Gonna... So, so check. Oh, yeah. And then he got traded. Yeah. So I'm going to get to that. So you got right now, you got your scoring threats. You got De'Aaron Fox, Trey Young, Darius Garland, Jalen Brunson, Tyrese Maxey. So check no, so check this oh, out, you, right? So, okay. so yeah, I got yeah, him in tears. Going, right? I got going. him in tears. You know what I'm saying? Keep going, so, keep going. So, so those are your scoring threats. So these guys yeah. have been in the league for a while. They've become scoring threats. Yeah. They've uh, uh, all all four of these guys have been major players in the playoffs. Jalen right. Brunson, Ty, Trey Young, Darius Garland, Darren Fox. Right. Actually, Darius Garland not as much. But then you got your young stars. Yeah. The young stars, like we like these are budding stars. Of course, you got Lamelo in there. Mm-hmm. I think. I, he just got injured. He, uh, I heard it might be like a pretty bad. It's pretty uh, long. I think they talking about yeah, yeah extended um, with his, his sprained ankle. But uh, at Lamelo, I'm not gonna talk about him too much because his team is uh, is losers. But yeah. Cade Cunningham, young young baller from Detroit. Yeah, he's his, his first year back from a big injury. Was he a uh, number one draft pick? He was. He yeah, was. Number one draft he's, pick. He's, he's he's. I think he's he's a pretty solid guy. Yeah. I hope he doesn't resign with with the Pistons. I hope he doesn't sign his con- his rookie extension. Right. Although every rookie does, you got to get your money. Yeah. But I, I just hope that. A player stands on business and be like, "Look, I just want to play for a contender, bro." Yeah. You know? Well, the Pistons are gonna have to build around him like heavy. They're gonna have to. They do some tried crazy, this year, crazy shit, but man. they keep adding like four centers and six point guards. Yeah. Like, come on, bro! Like, you got to put players around him. Although that's another one of, later I'm gonna talk about. But Asar Thompson, he, he's one of the guys in Detroit that I like. Yeah. But now you got two of the new newest additions to the to the superstar golden era of, of point guards, the two Tyrese's. <laughs> Talk to me, baby. Halliburton Max. and Maxie. Them two, boy. I rock with them so tough. Them two, boy, are nasty I, with you, it, man. You know I'm a Brooklyn Nets fan, so yeah. the, the Sixers are the ops. Yeah, we're, you know, division rivals, Very man. oppie. Yeah. Very oppie organization, bro. <laughs> I will say, I rock with Maxie the long way pause. Yeah. I love that dude. Yeah, he's fine, Downhill. Man. Seems like such a happy-go-lucky guy. Yeah. Like, I would love to have him as a teammate. Like, he seems like a real one, and... Just at his size, how tall is he? Like six two, six one? Yeah, he's not that tall. He's not that yeah, tall. He's, he's like he, six, he might be like six three. He, like he's in the higher end of the of the small six. Yeah, cra- yeah, crazy scoring ability inside. Yeah, and he just seems to have that edge. And then I think Tyrese Halliburton might be the best table setter in the league. He might be the best playmaker in the league. This that guy dude is nasty too, man. Crazy, weird, unorthodox shot, right? right? He's a little bigger for a point guard, so he's not. He might not be like the fastest guy, but he's slick with the ball. And then this FIBA World Cup, yeah, he learned how to be a table setter, like to be like, okay, I'm. And now he's the leading assist man in the league, and is the point guard for the highest scoring team in the league, the Pacers. Yeah, and Pacers look good, man. Which is my third topic. Mm. Uh, thing. The third thing I'm excited about this year, the new playoff contenders. Yeah, there's... we've got we've got Minnesota. They're the first yeah. seed. Uh, I mean, you can check that. 
uh, as of before this recording, OKC is the second uh, team in the West. They're right. my one of my favorite league pass watches. Sometimes I'll just be scrolling through league pass and I'll just you know I if the if OKC is playing yeah I am tuned in yeah Minnesota's still the number one seed yeah yeah I am tuned in to OKC and then in the East you've got Orlando yeah they, that's surprising but uh, not as surprising Manchero is like it, well, yeah to see the name is surprising for sure yeah. but but it's crazy because if you know you tuned in last yeah. year. Orlando towards the end of the year kind of made a run for the play-in. They didn't make it, obviously, but there's something about like the guys that they put put together. And I was watching the World Cup this year because I'm a fucking nerd yeah. and <laughs> a degenerate watching basketball at 3 a.m. Yeah. Um, but um I watched a lot of, I think it's the German team. Okay. And Franz Wagner is the real Yo, he's, deal. He's nasty. Real deal. He's going to be a future yeah, all-star in the he's league. He's nasty. And him and Bancaro together. Yeah. And then they were able to finally move, um, what's his name, Markel Fultz to the bench. Yeah. And Suggs. And they got Suggs. Suggs yeah. as, as a starter. Those That team is raw. And Wendell Carter, such an underrated pickup for them. Right. I thought that Vucevic trade was uh, was Orlando giving up. No, they re up. They got yeah. Wendell Carter, who's one of the most underrated big men in the league. You know what's crazy is a lot of these dudes, man, especially like Suggs and, and Bancaro, man, like- these dudes are like uh like club like club ball players. Hey, I don't guys, think they played together, but like yeah. they're in that era of like uh when the club was was killing it, man. Like right. like you had like Jalen Suggs, you had um uh, Jalen Green, mm. Julian Strother. Mm. Like and yeah, these, yeah. you know, I think all three of them actually play for the same club team. But like Van Carroll, all, all these guys, you know. Are those like Washington people? Because isn't Ben Carroll from Washington? I'm, I'm sure I'm they not, just traveled around. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, but and then they're traveling. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, in in the rule is you can have I think two players or three players border can play oh, with. Oh, that yeah. okay, okay, so okay. You can do that. They don't have to play right. with you the whole season. They yeah. can just you know, that guy's a beast though. Ben Carroll's a beast. Yeah, he is. I like, man. It. I like how he yeah plays. Orlando is definitely oh fuck. They're number three. They're, Philly moved down to the fourth seed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they've been at the fourth yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. And then um of course the other uh co- new playoff contender in the East is Indiana. Yeah. And um adding Obi Toppin. Uh they, a, I'm glad Obi Toppin. And Bruce left Brown, who's my dog from Brooklyn. I'm glad he won a championship last year with the Nuggets. Yeah, it's a Miami player. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I, I like the Pacers nucleus. I, I was rooting for them last year. They they had a nice nucleus, but now more than ever, they've got Halliburton. I think yeah. he's gonna be one of the best point guards of this generation, yeah. and I, I like the Pacers. Yeah, these these new guys coming up, but the point guards, like you're saying, so it yeah. kind of makes sense, you know, that yeah. this could be a golden era for it, the it, NBA. It, it's pretty cool that we've got, you know, and they're scoring point guards, scoring point guards, bro. Like what uh, the fuck? They're all, all, all of them almost averaging like thirty points a game. De'Aaron Fox, low key, he's not even like like the top tiers of this generation of point guards. He's averaging twenty nine. Yeah, he came back and dropped twenty nine. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's cool that we have all these new playoff concerns. There's there's a little more parity yeah. in the league. It's not just the same teams every right. year. You know, I'm glad that we got this new blood. All right. So number four, speaking of new blood, the fourth thing that I'm ex- most excited about the first season of the NBA, I think we have a pretty solid rookie class this year. You think so? I think, think this so? rookie class is pretty sick. So obviously, we got to name the two. Yeah. I think Wemby and Chet yeah. is like an incredible get for the NBA. Right. The the next big NBA rivalry, and they legitly don't like each other, and I appreciate that. Yeah, and they legit like weigh the same. They're both like 130 <laughs> pounds, they seven both, feet. They both weigh like me, and I'm five <laughs> yeah. three, bro. Yeah. Um, and like it's crazy because you know I was just looking at stats earlier. Chet's season is incredible. He was my preseason pick for Rookie of the Year mm-hmm. because I felt like. Wemby wasn't going to hit the 65-game minimum. I felt like he was going to get load managed at the end of the year because ah, the Spurs they, are fucking tanking. They, yeah, but they're, play, they're playing him. And it's <laughs> they crazy because his minutes are going up every yeah, yeah, single yeah. game. But you never know with Pop. Yeah, you, never you never know, know. with Pop because, I mean, they they invented load management. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So by, by March, I would not be surprised. Oh, Wemby has a yeah. s- pulled hamstring. What's your, what's your thoughts on load management? I don't want to take you away from oh, yeah, this yeah, real quick, yeah, but I just sure. want to find out your thoughts on load management. Of course, I hate it. Cause um, I know I know you're like a uh, almost like I don't want to call you a purist, but I, you're definitely like old school for sure traditional NBA guy. I think load management sucks 
for the fans. Yeah, I, I agree. Because, you know, we don't live in NBA City, but imagine us just, you know, we had a team here and we're, you know, let's say we had a kid, we yeah. had children, and we bought tickets for our family. Uh, we want to see, uh, you know, this X player, name X player on a star team, on the away team coming into town. Yeah. And because it's an away game, they sat him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or it's, or it's the, the second of a back to back. I personally, I know that injuries exist and I know that every player is hurt at all times. You know, there's all, every player is fighting it. Some injuries are playable, some are not. We, we both played basketball. You look more yeah. than me, deeper than me. Yeah. So you know what it's like to play with like a banged up injuries, a nagging injury. Yeah, 100%. I just don't like it when these players are healthy. And, and not sitting. playing, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, I get it because, you know, you don't want to risk an injury in a in a certain situation, but like, I mean, it can for, happen the love, any time. for the you love can, of the game, bro. The injury can happen in the game you do play. You know for, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for the love of the game, play. Yeah, I think you Charles know? Barkley said it best, man. If you're healthy, play the game, man. If you on the sidelines, on the sidelines, yeah. wearing your freshest, you know, yeah. Outfit. Put a fucking jersey on. You know what man. I mean? Standing around, climbing and celebrating. Yeah. Your ankle seems fine to me, man. Yeah. Your your hamstring seems fine to me, man. I know those are like the tricky injuries. Leg injuries are pretty tough or back injuries are pretty tough. But I'm just like, man, there's no way. You, I just saw your IG or you no, know, there was leaks of you on IG like at a strip club or a, 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 a cl nightclub Dancing the night before. You was yeah. turned up, but you was injured in Miami. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Yeah. I just don't like... I don't like load management, but I understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's strategy. The one that really makes sense to me on load management is LeBron. 21 years in the game and like... He's averaging 35, 35, 35 minutes a game. Yeah. You know, and he's only supposed to get like 28. And like he... Like they're, they clearly tried to play him at 28 minutes yeah. a game, but they can't They can't score without him on yeah. the floor. And you see the disclaimer, it said like, uh, it, unless the game is close or he's needed. <laughs> and they need, they, yeah. the Lakers need him because uh, yeah. the, if you guys, you know, look at the analytics, like they're plus minus when he's not on the floor that yeah. the Lakers, and th this is for his last five years with the Lakers. Right. Every single time that LeBron is off the floor, they are trizzy. What yeah. is going on out there, bro? Man, you know what? I, I, I couldn't tell you, man. I couldn't tell you. Anyway, so back to the- Back to the, the close uh, of five. The, yeah, so we've got Chet and Wemby. Look at Chet's stat line this year so far. Mm -hmm. 17, 8, two blocks a game. Yeah. Crazy. That is crazy because it's hard to get a block. For sure. And technically he's from 2022, but yeah. I still, you know, he's counted as this rookie class. Check out these shooting splits, though. Yeah. 56, 44, 88. That's wild. As a seven-foot- one seven foot two guy. Yeah, that is wild. Crazy shooting splits. But that's bro. how he played in high school. Exactly. And college. And his favorite player. Yeah. KD. Yeah. And then we got Wemby, nineteen nine and three blocks a game. Yeah, that's not as efficient as a crazy. shooter because you know he's playing with a lot of usage rate, but he's playing as a high usage rate. But Wemby, real deal. I've seen him I twice. I feel like now. they be. They. I feel like Wemby sometimes is bringing the ball up the court, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like it's 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 tough to get a bucket when you have to bring it up the court sometimes, or yeah. you're getting it. And it's tough option. when it's tough when your team is obviously tanking because you put Jeremy Sochan, who is I call the uh, the Kroger brand Dennis Rodman, yeah. as your starting point guard. What what is that about? But why are they tanking? Because I'm hearing that this next draft class is supposed to be boo boo. Well, I think the reason why is because they know that they weren't that he's not ready yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um they clearly the way they moved this offseason, bro, they had like 30, 40 million in cap room and didn't pick up anyone. Cause no yeah. one wants to go to San Antonio, obviously. Yeah. But I heard they didn't even offer anything to Austin Reeves, who was like rumored to go to San Antonio or right. was was gonna be at least offered as a restricted free agent yeah. to sway the Lakers from not signing him. They didn't make any big moves this year. Their biggest move this offseason was re-signing Zach Collins. No disrespect to dude, right. but like my dude did not <laughs> it did not deserve that thirty five million extension, yeah, bro. Yeah. Um. But anyway, so yeah, it's tough for Wemby to be in that position. I feel like they're just gonna get another lottery pick next year. 
uh, and just build around when because they're in for the long run. They're not rushing him. You know what I mean? In my right. opinion, I, and we know Pop's game. He has never been that dude to rush anything. Yeah. Every team he built, he built over time. And do you think he's gonna stick around for this build out? Who Wemby? No, uh, Pop. Oh, that's the thing. He's a little older. Yeah. Do you think he stick around I, for this? That's build what out? I thought they were gonna at least, you know, make a run within the next couple of years. He's a little older. I always he's been rumored to be. Uh, retiring, you know. I know he lost his wife a couple years ago, so I always thought like maybe this is just his escape. Like maybe basketball is what he, true, yeah. he just wants to be around the yeah. game he loves. And clearly, he's the best coach we've ever yeah, had. And, and if generation. your brain is still working, yeah, you can coach, and yeah. you can kind of see like him doing a little things like 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 the other day when he played against Kawhi and the Clippers. Yeah, like he told the crowd to to, to, to stop boo. booing. Yeah. yeah, I was just like, oh yeah, pops is. He's, 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 a, he's, he's a, doing pop things, he, man. He's, he's, he's getting softer. You know what yeah. I mean? He's like a little more lovable than he used to be. You yeah. know what I mean? He's like, oh, okay. I, he still loves the game. But okay, so between behind, other than those two, you got those two amazing players. We've got the new budding NBA rivalry. But beyond yeah. those two, we got guys like Asar Thompson. He played yeah. in the overtime league, right? This guy's the real deal, bro. I saw a couple Pistons games because, you know, I was flipping through league pass. And, yo, my man is active defensively. I think he's averaging one steal, two blocks a game, uh, 11 and 10 rebounds a game. 11 That's points, wild. 10 I didn't boards. Know that. As a rookie. That's wild. Crazy. This guy is the real deal. Him and his brother, Amen Thompson, with, yeah. with, with, with Houston, he's not getting as much run out there, but Asar is the real deal. I saw him in Summer League. That kid is nice. Um, I, I think he is. With the Pelicans, he's a former uh, UConn guard, Jordan Hawkins. Mm. Uh, he's replacing CJ because CJ has a collapse. CJ McCollum has a yeah. collapse zone. Yeah, yeah, I want him to play so bad, man. Me too. I, I love Zion. I yeah. watch almost every Pelican game as much as I can because I rock with Zion. The yeah. tough. Um, so they've got this guy starting in, instead of uh, CJ McCollum CJ, yeah. because um, I think they had a bunch of guards that are out. Trey, Trey Murphy and um, Jose Alvarado are out. They got this guy as a um, starter, 13 a game as a rookie. Pretty sick, man. He started nine games for the Pelicans. He's pretty nice. I'm going to the Pelicans-Lakers game on New Year's Eve. Oh, fire. Yeah, How'd you score that ticket? <laughs> I, just, I haven't scored him yet. I actually, I might hit my boy up, man. Okay. If he's listening to this, I might have to holler at you because yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I know your cousin is the head coach. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> really? yeah. yeah, them Laker but, tickets get get real uh, man, sold those tickets out, are, bro. Them, those tickets are so they're already sold out. I yeah. gotta get them on resale, especially on holidays. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but um, I I hope CJ's playing that game, man. I really want to watch CJ yeah. play. I know. I hope Zion is playing. I hope LeBron's. Oh playing. my God! I hope that no like, one's load managed for that. Yeah, I, I do not want to pay these like high price tickets to see these guys load managed sure. on fucking New Year's for Eve, sure. bro. But I'm, 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 you know, I'm praying for the best. I mean. So far, Zion looks good. He's yeah. ha had only one missed game this year. Um, him and Bi are finally figuring it out. Yeah. I love that. There's always been talk of them like competing for the spotlight, which is you know like if you guys figure it out together, y'all will be unstoppable. And they just need a point guard. I feel like yeah. CJ might not be the answer because he's getting old and he's getting injured. This is his second collapsed lung, by the way. Yeah, he can't even get on the court. Man. <laughs> can't get his lung to not collapse. Come yeah. on, man. Anyway, um, so you got him and the Pels crazy out of nowhere. Derek Lively, yeah, of the Mavs, former Duke guy. Um, from the from the uh, draft boards, he didn't seem like he was gonna be an impact guy. Right, he's been starting for the Mavs, averaging eight points, eight rebounds, one block, shooting about seventy percent from the field. Yeah, pretty sick. He's yeah. a good addition. I like him with Luca. Um, crazy that you know, like I said, all these rookies are like impact players. A month in, which is which is dope because a lot of times you know we're just when you when you watch the NBA season you're just ready to see like the star players that you mm -hmm. saw last year or the year before the or guys the you role know players you know yeah right? and it might yeah. be one rookie that really stands out yeah you know what I'm saying but uh, even this in rookie. their second year yeah second and third year these guys are like you know uh, coming you know uh, I don't even know what to say but they're becoming like. Uh, I don't want to say the face of the league, but they're becoming the guys that uh, yeah. what's the fucking word, man? Household names. They're yeah. starting to become household names on their teams. Yeah, and just they're becoming impact guys younger. Yeah, you know, like players are going into the NBA like prepared. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like some of them, they're not troublemakers. They're right. just they just game at the crib, bro. Like they seem like they got their head on right. Um, media trained. Like these young guys are really know how to like impact the game. And I'm gonna name a couple honorable mentions yeah. that are really good. Jaime Jaquez, 
Yeah, from the oh, Miami man. Heat. I like him, man. He's I like, I love his game. He was a shooter and very athletic. He played yeah. against the the Nets the other day. Like his finishes are so crazy. I'm just like, who is this guy? Yeah. How is this dude so athletic? Do you remember watching him at UCLA? I saw a little bit of UCLA. Yeah. I, I'm not a big college ball fan because yeah. I think the product has been diluted so much that I just kind of like stopped following college until the March Madness. Right. But I caught a couple of UCLA UCLA games because of him. Uh, saw him in the tournament. That kid is nice. Yeah. I like him. I Miami just knows how to pick the hardest working yeah. most. <laughs> yeah. Those guys, whatever that is, whatever their shit. Yes, coach. Yeah, you know I'm saying yeah. like they really know how no to problems. pick. They really know how to yeah. pick their guys, man. And then um a couple more just from this rookie class that I've just I caught them on league pass. They're pretty sick. Bilal Koulibaly from Washington mm. Wizards. He was um Victor Wimbanyama's teammate at his at pro Ignite. team. At, no, uh, at uh, whatever his French team is. Then oh, in, yeah, in, in France. France. Yeah, yeah. You. They were teammates there, and he got drafted. I think the eighth pick by the Wizards. Yeah, saw a couple of his Wizards games. They're terrible. They're a terrible watch. Don't watch Wizards games on purpose. Like you know right. what I'm saying. But that kid is nice. Real deal. Seems it's like fun a, to bet against the Wizards, man. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, the under. <laughs> yeah, no, not even that. Like you get the you get the the player. Against the Wizards, you get the, okay. to the scores yeah, against yeah, the Wizards. Yeah, you bet the over on their points for sure because they're, they're gonna just, fucking ball they, out. They, they, those guys can't stop a parked car. Yeah, um, <laughs> Keontae George of the Utah Jazz, another guy that like turned like I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, yeah. Just he's a, who's one of their role players, one of their rotation guys in in a pretty deep uh, Utah team. He's getting a lot of minutes in closing stretches. Right. Uh, and then Brandon Miller, obviously from Charlotte, he's the number two pick. You know, it's tough for him. I I don't really see like that high of a ceiling for him, but he seems like, you know, like a very Paul George type of style of player. Yeah. And he's averaging 13 a game to start the year. I like him as a um as a rookie. Obviously, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where Scoot Henderson falls into all of this. He hasn't been that strong of a of a rookie campaign so far. I'm, I hope he figures yeah, but out. Also, I'm, like it's tough at Portland, man. It's like uh, once yeah. they got rid of Dame, it's like the whole team just depleted, you know. Right. And then and Nurkic is playing over at um, in Suns, in, in, yeah, in Phoenix now. Yeah. So it's like, who do they really have? You know right. what I'm saying? They have an interesting, weird collection of guys, but like on paper, you know, it's yeah, it, you can only go so far. Like they're gonna tank. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So with that being said. My last thing that I'm really excited about this uh, this first season, first month of the NBA season, is this in season tournament. In season tournament, man, it's fire, bro. I love it. It's fire. What do I you like think it. about it, bro? I like it a lot. Um, I just I think the incentive for players to obviously it's for money, yeah, but the incentive for players to actually um, play at this time of the year. Yeah, you know, and it goes into the whole load management thing because you're almost kind of forced to play these games for sure. You know, because you want to compete. And the thing that I like about it the most, and I'm going to talk about the money aspect of it, is because there's players on a team that don't have contracts like the All Stars. There's only mm -hmm. one or two players with these crazy Matt Cap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the rest, like players, are getting you know twenty million, thirteen million. That's fine. Majority of the players are probably getting paid like minimum. Mi minimum, yeah. yeah. Two million, yeah, three million, million yeah. nine. You know what I'm saying? Like that's five hundred thousand goes a long exactly. way for those guys. So those guys are hungry. So when they get in the game, it's like they're probably pushing the, the player. Like, yo, we got to get. I'm trying to get this bag, and not not just them, but even the the players that are like making. You know, fifty million a year. Let's get it for the young bull. The, yeah, the, the, yeah, the that let's half put, a let's, mil let's, is. Let's put money in his pocket. Yeah, that's some good. That's a good chunk of change. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Especially, yeah. Um, I'm a I'm a big proponent of people getting their bags, man. For sure. You know what I'm saying. Like I, I, you know, can't knock the hustle. I love it. Yeah. Um, but I I think the in season tournament also is tuning fans in more at this time because I was the type type of guy like I don't really tune in till. All, after the All Star break, okay, or during All Star, all right. I, I'll tune in the games here and there. I watch highlights, but like this year, it's like I'm keeping up on who won For yesterday. Sure. You know For what sure. I'm saying? Like, or who won in in, in their in, in the in, in season game? Of course, some pool gam play. gambling implications. I'm assuming. Gambling, yeah, yeah, well, not yeah. even just the gambling, yeah. but just like to see like obviously the Sixers aren't aren't in it. Um, they're not gonna make it. Mm. But it's like you hope that they do. You want to see what these guys yeah. do in. Big moments. You and know at the what I'm end saying? of the day, these games count for your regular season. They do. Record. They so do. like you want you want to have 
good showing early on anyway because you don't want to yeah. play from behind. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like uh, like a lot of a lot of playoff positioning towards the end is like between one game, half games between, and and those were games you could have won, but yeah. you. Gave, didn't give a shit in November, and I'm glad that teams give a shit in November now. You know? Exactly, because yeah. now you got those teams, like you said earlier, you got teams that you don't normally don't see in uh, in the top ten uh, standings yeah. to make the playoffs at the end of the season. I know we're early, yeah. but the fact that they're trying to win these games and they are winning these games, it's helping sure. their overall standings, and they actually have uh, you know a chance at playoffs early in the league in the season. Yeah. Just, some, just you know a, something saying? to play for. Yeah, yeah I like and I, I love it, man. I like the yeah. idea. What um, you think of the courts? Some of it is too much for the eye. <laughs> so the um, the Nets just had a really. I like the Nets. It's easy. Simple. It's gray and yeah, black. Yeah, yeah. But like Philly had red and yeah. red. It's like, I was like, yo, I can't even. Yo, I can't stand the font on the indie court. The indie. Oh yeah, indie. yeah, yeah. What is with that font, man? man. I, I remember big stickler with like design and stuff and like fonts like that, like. The B on the cause nets right. thing it just really irks me. Stuff like that. I'm just like, who is making these design choices? Like, guys, you are the biggest professional league in in the world, the NBA, biggest basketball league in the world. You could afford to hire the best designers. Come but on. that's the thing is they they're trying to though. Like, uh, you know, like New yeah. York just hired um, what's his name uh, of Kith of Kith, Kith. Yeah, 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 to to be their uh, creative yeah, director. Yeah, yeah. So like they're trying to do things, but uh. The court though, man. Some of them is extra, bro. Yeah, you like keep it simple. Didn't the didn't the Knicks have like an orange court? And it was like I guess for some people who have like maybe color blindness or something. It should type look of, green or something. It looked tough <laughs> to watch the ball. Oh, they can't on see the it. orange yeah, court. Yeah, they can't. <laughs> I'm just like, what is going on with this in season tournament? But okay, I will say some, yeah, maybe next year what they need to do. I'll, obviously, I like the idea of alternate courts for specific games yeah. like this, but make them more subtle, or maybe like maybe the color not so bright. Maybe maybe a lighter tone of like yeah. like that red could be a little more uh, light red or pinkish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we like get that. it. It's the in season game. We get yeah. it. Like yeah. you, you're telling us right we now. We know the implications. You yeah. guys, we see LL Cool J and the Roots commercial yeah. shown every single yeah. time. We know it's the end season game. We know. You know. <laughs> you saw. You, I see the big ass trophy in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Like, but I, I hope that they like next year tone it down a little bit or just make it more subtle. But yeah. like have a different alternate design because they already do alternate courts. Yeah. But just next year, just maybe the colorway not be like bright red. Like pick a you know on the spectrum a little lighter. I light it up. You know. Yeah. Or just something, you know, just, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm i not a court designer, but yeah. shit, it's too much. When I was young, Super Sidebar, I used to love drawing arenas. Like, yeah. That was oh, my favorite. Like, I used to be yeah. in art class, and yeah. that was, like, a weird thing I used to do when I was, like, third, third grade. I used to draw stadiums and arenas. That was, like, a thing that I used to do. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, that's why I'm, like, really passionate about this whole court thing. Because I'm like, guys, what is going on with these bright-ass colors, man? Anyway. Yeah. Um. Uh. Moving forward, I feel like they need to change the name. They need to make yeah. it more like in season tournament sounds corny, bro. Like, right. obviously, I'm sure they're gonna have like a corporate sponsor at the end or something, some like Google or you know what yeah, I mean? They got to, Google, they, yeah, they got to. But I like the idea of just they should have just named it NBA Cup. Yeah, that was that have been. Yeah, what happened to that? Keep it simple. Like, I know this is an offshoot of like how the FA Cup is in yeah. Premier League. You know what I mean? So it might as well just have been like some simple, like the NBA Cup, or like I'm sure they would. It would have been cool if they had named it after a commissioner, like a Commissioner's Cup or like a David Stern Cup or yeah. something. I don't know. But anyway, like I think they just need to change that name because the marketing on that is just like in season tournament. I'm like, yeah. dog, that sounds so cheesy, dog. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. Like that's corny, bro. Yeah. Like could have just named it NBA Cup. That would have been I would have <laughs> bought that merch, you know what I mean? Nah, I feel and we you. and we got the um the tournament next week here in Vegas. Yeah. The, or, I won't be in next town week, for it, two, but two it's weeks, next yeah. weekend. Yeah, yeah next, next weekend. weekend. Yeah. I, I was looking at the tickets. I was like, the lower bowl is a little pricey. It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's Vegas. It's Vegas, prices. it's Vegas yeah, pricey yeah. for sure, man. Yeah. But yeah, that's my five most exciting things uh from this uh first season first month of the NBA yeah. season. Yeah. Got you, brother. Just to for the people to get to know you a little more, three people you have dinner with, dead or alive. I would want to have dinner with Rick Rubin. Oh shit, that's fire. Uh, Pharrell. Yeah. And then my uncle. Rest in peace to my uncle. Rest in peace, Mario. 
He's a music lover. Yeah. I just want a conversation over good food. Yeah. Talking up nerding about music. Yeah. And wow, Rick Rubin, Pharrell, your uncle. That would be that would be that would be the ner- that would be the nerdiest music talk. <laughs> yeah. That'll be bananas. Yeah. Rest in peace to my uncle, man. He would have loved yeah. to see me like in my career now. But yeah, yeah. like those those that, that would be a pretty nice uh, dinner table. Yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah. Uh, if you could relive any day, what would it be? I've had a lot of great days. <laughs> yeah. Which is what one uh, comes there, to mind first. I mean, just, it's just in the pop in my head, but like there was a show we did um, uh, uh, 2021, right? At, it was the fir- one of the first shows of the, of the after the pandemic. It was mm-hmm. headlined by Esther. Yeah. And um, I was one of them. Uh, the homie Leo's in there. JDHD was also on the lineup. And I feel like... It was such a perfect day. It was yeah. a perfect night. And like all the homies from all over the country came out for that show. It was like the first show after the pandemic. Mm. And like it was at Ferguson downtown. And like the city came out. It was like 800, 1,000 people in there. Yeah, basically. everybody wanted to get out. That's yeah, they just fire. wanted to get out. And it was yeah. like one of the first shows after the pandemic. Like kind of like everything opened up. And like that night was perfect. I don't know if that's the most perfect. Day I've ever had. I'm sure I've had better days, but yeah. like that, just off the top, I can just it was remember a good feeling. Yeah, was you a wanted, great day. Yeah. Like just to to see everyone again. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that was a great great time. Fire. Yeah. Well, yo, Moose. I hope I get to see you spin again, which I'm I'm pretty sure I will. Yeah, hopefully. You know? I, yeah, hopefully one of these days, man. Let's kick it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like let's get let's let's chop it up. Let's get let's just break bread over some things. Maybe we are gonna make cook, cook up some food. I'm gonna cook up some be, music too. You know? Yeah, <laughs> man, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you never know. But I, I just wanted to say I wanted I want to uh, give you some of your flowers, man. I appreciate you for sticking to sticking to what you love. You know because you give people, and I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but you give people through your music, man. You give them a, a specific feeling, and sometimes a lot of that, you know, helps people get through things. And I know when I listen to your music, it always makes me feel good. You know what I mean? It always makes me want to like get up and fucking do something or celebrate something or just fucking vibe out. And um, you're like one of the people where I feel like if you were to just be like, you know what? I don't know if I want to make music no more. I'd be like, damn, I'm going to have to just spin back to the older shit because it still spins, man. It's like it can travel through time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but not only that, I appreciate all the times that you've helped me uh, through my music career. You know what I'm saying? And you yeah, might likewise, brother. You know what I'm saying? You you might not know it, but like, it's almost like a, a like like I said when I first heard your shit, bro. It was super dope to me. You know what I mean? I was like, I I, it's like rare or hard to find good music coming out of Vegas, right? Even though it's out there. But when I heard your shit, I was like, dude, this dude got something special. So it's just amazing to see you like grow with it now that you're DJing more you know across the world uh it's fun to see your stories you know uh shit maybe I'll pull up to New York one day when you're at this so we hey, some rooftop vibes man. you know what I'm saying so we might have to hit up New York or some shit yeah bro. might have to yeah. man but I just appreciate everything that you do I watch you uh grow you know as a musician as a as a person I love I love how much you love your family yeah. You know, you're a good ass dude. I wish that more people could see it. So if anyone listening to this, if you got this far, make sure you <laughs> check real. out. How long has this been? <laughs> it's like we're like almost three Dude, hours in. God damn. Yeah. Check out my man OG Moose L V on all social on all, all social media. Um and before we end the show, um last question is who would you like to see on my show? But you gotta help me get them on. First off, I gotta say I appreciate you. You know what I mean? My man. Like, my I just man. wanted to give you your flowers. Like, you one of the Vegas legends for real. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Vegas OGs for real. Like, like, like I said, I, I, I had already been following you before we even met and right. worked together. So, just knowing, like I said, like earlier, I said, like, you you and your generation of artists, you're, you know, you're, you and your homies, all you guys, like, paved the way for us. You know what I mean? Right. So... I always appreciated you for that. You was you a stand up dude for real. You a real one. Every time I've ever rocked with you, all the time, the fun shit we've done, like all yeah. the, all the inebriated <laughs> nights. Yeah. You remember that show we threw at the Triple B's? You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, like, that's right, like, man. To that point, right. that was the most money I had made doing what we loved. You know what I mean? Man, and we all blessing, split man. it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like 
and we we had fun doing it. And yeah. I was just like, damn, like these are some real motherfuckers. And like you introduced me to a lot of great people, a lot of people that I know. And like, um, yeah, I appreciate you for real. So I just wanted to say that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Much love, brother. Much love. I mean, for you sure, want for real? Hell uh, yeah. I fuck with you too. The long way pause, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, you know what? I think the most obvious answer. I think you need Nick and Nate, Nick Crucial and Nate Quest on here. Ah, help me get them on, man. You might. Have, I you can might, just hit them up. But yeah, yeah you can just hit, hit them up. Hit but them like, up, you man. might have to get to you know maybe individually too because I know they're both having their yeah. solo budding careers. Yeah. But like, you might have to do the two mics just to get the full. Yeah, story, no, we're gonna make it mean? happy because yeah. uh, like those I two said, dudes man, are real ones, man. Yeah, we working on uh, we're working on a second season. Um, and and then uh, you know, I wanna I wanna be able to expand the show a lot more than what we see now. So, um, be you know be ready. You might get a call. Because you know, I like I like doing a, a mini documentary style type of um, mm. content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might be getting a call, man. I might have to follow you around when you're doing your when Hell you're working, yeah. man. But yeah, for down. sure. Like for for an, another guest for season two, those two, I think they're um, a big part of your story. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and like you know, are, you know, those guys uh, are one of my favorite people to work with. Yeah. I, I guess that earlier, if I was going to answer the question earlier, those were two of my favorite people yeah. to work with. Yeah. Just because, like, yeah, those those are the homies, man. Like, you know, they, they keep it real, and their music's quality. It does, yeah. look, it's very rare sometimes to to have that. So, like, you know, it's appreciate to uh, uh, appreciate to those two dudes. You definitely need yeah. them on talking about practice. Man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, folks, OG Moose, make sure you guys check him out. I'll have it in the description, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.